as Walter makes a run ahead of it. Burkamp suddenly changed pace through the centre. It's Burkamp! That's magnificent! The move, and then this, which left Dabby's ass totally stranded. Hello, dear listener. Uh, I thought I'd confuse everybody by starting a little bit late, but then that's what we've done. We've been waiting for Danny, mainly. He, he was the one, the reason we were delayed, nothing to do with Chris and I. We were prompt and on time. It was all Danny and his yep. banana eating antics. Mm -hmm. So, Danny, have you finished your banana now? And, and, your half half cup of, and your 18th cup of coffee? Caffeine-free coffee. I bought caffeine-free Tassimos, and I was testing them all out to see which is the best, and uh, found it's best if you get one strong one and one weak one, mix them together. Oh. So there you go. Yes, oh, I have one and a half bananas, because I uh, don't fuck around when it comes to bananas. It's either all or nothing, or half. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we'll leave you uh, in terms of the, well, what should we call you? The Nespresso Goldilocks. Uh, oh. and introduce a man that has not been here for a while and uh, we have missed his presence he has had a should we say an enlightening over the uh break since it's been away and it's chris welcome back the pirates how are we doing josh you all right i am very well thank you uh we were just discussing which one of us is going to take up the keith dover part of the podcast that you need to require of somebody who has not seen a lot of football in the last couple of weeks and maybe forgets about a lot of football players that do play for arsenal right now well i mean that i think you're i think you're fit for the job i i want you to prove yourself but i feel like you can do this yeah, I, I feel like that might be where we're at. Um, I haven't done my fantasy football yet, so I can't tell you who's injured or not, um, irrespective of Arteta's press conferences. But, Danny, should we talk to the chat box, or have you got some things we want to go through? Because, as you say, there's not a lot that we've really spoken about. No, this is, Loki's there. There won't be many people here because no one gives a damn about football at the moment because there is no football. Hello, Loki. Uh, BX is there in... Um... South Kakalaki, I think he said he was. Stefan's there, as always. Sai is here. Every, hashtag everybody out. He'll be full of the carpenter outs tonight. You can guarantee it. Uh, Danny is such an amateur. You don't believe a word they're saying. I was here at quarter two for an 8pm start, and Chris turned up at five past, and Josh turned up at 30 seconds too. Uh, Thunder Road. Carpenter is gracing our presence today. Thumbs up time. <laughs> Sai, so Arsenal women, is that why Chris is hitsy? Straight away, it's like he hasn't been gone. <laughs> Someone called Carl Walker, sounds like the kind of person who would delay your journey to work. Chris is on, this is going to be a seven-hour podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Femi? Femi's kids have got chicken pox, so he came on before the show started and just said he couldn't make it, and then uh, said hello to his kids. And they're covered in calamine lotion. Uh, Thunder says, loan watch time. Mm, I'll do a, in a separate video for that, probably. Uh, that's a very pale podcast. Well, if you turn up, Carl. Getting balance in, right? Full of, full of colourful. Actually, it's not very pale. You should see um, Richard. Who's Richard? You should see Chris's trousers. Uh, potato. Well, I haven't seen you for a while. Oh. A pirate, a potato, and a confused man. <laughs> Who's the potato? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, so Danny, I'm sorry, but you are very much the potato in that. It's terrible because I've got all the lights on. My mother's still here. She's uh, we had snow. Look, in, we never get snow. Where is it? It's here. It's uh, look at that snow. It's not really there you go. snow, is it? It's like it's like a it's like somebody with with uh, with dandruff farted, isn't it? It's not really <laughs> snow. It's, it's all gone now. If, um, if, if Ray. If, if Ray Fox uh, is watching or listens to this later on, first of all, hi, Ray, how you doing? Uh, he would laugh at that picture. Have you seen the conditions that Ray runs in in in, in Jeff land? Is that knee high? He, he runs in some, like, Baltic with his dog. Oh, yeah, it's like full snowscapes, beautiful sunrises. The man is an absolute trooper. It is. How's That's your run snow. going? Good. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's not been as consistent as I'd like it to be because I've been Same here. busy with work. But I, I'll get there. Sun, sun's out now, so hopefully I'll get the, the lighter evenings, you know? 
you can do more. Yeah. To be fair, Danny, you were pretty consistent for the last 20 years with your walking and running. Yeah. Not I've lost about an inch around my belly, so if you know. I'm, uh, <sighs> I had nothing but protein yesterday. I had sausages, pork loins, and gammon. Nothing else. <laughs> imagine, <laughs> imagine the toilet today. <laughs> I was so happy, listener, <laughs> that this podcast will not be broadcast through smell vision <laughs> Mm-hmm. No, it won't. What are we going to talk about then? Because there's not really much to, is there? I mean, Josh has completely forgot what football is on. I thought we were playing Saturday. Turns out we're playing Monday, which is Sean's graduation day. So I've got to get up at 6 a.m. So I'm going to bed straight after this show, and I won't be getting up until 6 a.m. that day. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so anybody watching any national football? Not what's, I only watch tournaments because that's what France win the world champions in. I don't know if anyone knows that. So, They're not European uh, yeah. champions, though, are they? No, well, that doesn't count. Nobody cares about the Euros. So, yeah, it's, that's, that's I like England are now de facto European champions because Italy aren't going to the World Cup. That's how I'm taking it. Oh, is that how it how it works? Mm. Cool. Yeah, it's, it's come home. Now. getting on? Is he doing all right? Or? He's currently wrestling himself out of a wet paper bag of insults ah. and abuse. Um, but no, it's all right. Gareth's there. If you don't fuck up for Gareth, it's fine. You're still in the squad. I mean, yeah. Tyrone Mings is still a full England international. I don't think I need to say a lot more, do I? Really? No, no. but don't worry. The Seaside Mustafi is now going to be our hero. What a man. Nick has given us 10p. 10 cheers. Uh, I'm just going to call him out on that. That's that's cheap, Nick. That's, mm. that's poor for me. We've I mean... seen how much his Twitch channel brings in. Nick, Nick, what what Nick's doing there is like the equivalent, you know, when you pay for like your Tesco in it or, or your pizza, and it says, "Would you like to round it up by thirteen p to charity?" And you go, "Yeah, that's fine." It's like it's kind of a token gesture, like half a hand job, that kind of thing. We're not talking about the euros. And oh, James, our very own James said, "Sausage, pork loin, and gammon, the Brexit meal of choice." <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Canuck Stan made the World Cup. Good for them. Canucks, Canucks. Yes, That's yes, that's media. Wonderful football, eh? Yeah, yes. what's that all about? So, and America have made it. I'm not sure. America lost last night, and I think Mexico, Mexico, lost. And USA. USA lost. Yeah, uh, USA had to lose by six, didn't they? To, to, yeah, to uh, go so out, they, and... they only lost by two, and that's a win in their book. There you go. I believe that we will win. Yeah, I'm surprised if it had been any more than three, they would have invaded. Um, who did they lose to? Costa Bloody Rica, not even a real yeah. country. Canada the, lost to a canal. How's that possible? <laughs> Costa Rica, the home of Paolo Wanchop. Remember him and that goal at Old Trafford back in the day? I remember him playing for uh, West Ham Dar- and for, uh, Derby as well. That was his first club, oh, I think. It's all over Canada first, Mexico second, USA third. They've all qualified. Yeah. Draws and on Costa Friday. Rica. What it draws tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow. No, I mean, they're in the green, so they've all got to the final, but Costa Rica yeah. are in the playoffs. And and all yeah. jokes aside, um, my hat comes off. Fair play to Canada. Like the the reaction and the you know the the media that that showed how happy they were. Wasn't it just like a little bit fuzzy inside to see a, a, a united group just enjoying themselves and met? Is that I think it's their first? Is it their only their second ever World Cup? First since eighty six, I, I think it is. Yeah, fair yeah. play. Like they are an emerging nation and. Everyone knows who Alfonso Davis is, and most people know Jonathan David is now. But they've got a couple of other good little players in that squad, and I think they might might surprise a few. They won't go deep, but you know, it's good. Some, it's good to Chris, have new nations. Chris likes Canada because they're basically French England. Um, exactly. That's why. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Petito is uh, Petito has said that he's actually um, told me to fuck me. He's Costa Rican. <laughs> 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 they come up, Petito. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> Hold of Joe Campbell and uh, Keon Navas. So Keon Navas, cheeky yeah. little Keon Navas. Isn't mm-hmm. um, Joe Campbell playing in Portugal now? Is that where he is? Last I heard, oh, Mexico. You, you should I be across this, Danny. I he think he's. To... I don't think he's in Portugal anymore. I think, as Danny is right, I think he is in Central America somewhere. Is it Tijuana? Is it Mexico? I I, mem- I just remember him basically playing for every Monterrey. Monterey, that's right. Yeah, the one with the big M and the yeah, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Yep. Yes. Blue, uh, blue and white kits, if I'm not mistaken. Possibly. Um, anyway, great yeah. podcast, guys. Thanks for tuning in. We'll there we go. I told you, I, I told you, our, our, our knowledge of football was broken after an international <laughs> week. But yeah, the draws from Friday, and I can't wait to see who England get in the uh, in the group stages. It's going to be great. Uh, At least they can't. Uh, can't get Sweden this year. 
No, can't get Sweden, but we can mm. get Switzerland and Poland. So Lock that's, it in. that's always available. And Tunisia, um, they're available. So we can definitely Here, see. Here's a question for you, Josh. I won't ask Danny because mm. no one cares. Um, if you could, would you put Ukraine through and just have an extra team and then let Scotland and Wales fight it out? Or would you? what would you do? Because I've seen some interesting takes on that. Mm. What's the background to that, though? Are they not allowed to play? What's the background of that? Well, is? There's a little not, bit of an incident going on, there's Danny, this thing between going them on and there. Russia. You might have heard about it. <laughs> have, you know. they, as in, have they not been allowed to do all of their qualifications? No, they, they, they've, they've got, got one, one game. game they, they've got to play Scotland, which is scheduled for like June. But the mm -hmm. thought process being that if they, if everything is sorted in terms of that there's peace, they're going to be more motivated than ever to get their team there, which mm -hmm. is not unfair on Scotland, but it's going to be a tougher game. And then the well, other argument won is... Euro, um, Eurovision Song Contest. They, they're going to win that. You can't have well, them winning the World Cup as well. What more could you want? But the other argument is if they if they um, struggle to field a squad and they just put out a bunch of, you know, whoever's left in Ukraine, then it's mm. sort of a little bit, you know... Oleg Luzhny has stopped managing and gone to fight. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, 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 I wouldn't be against sort of just putting them through and then you know putting <coughs> putting scotland and wales into a final oh it's loki puts it just <coughs> <Scotland out. laughs> yeah. i mean there's that as well but uh and at least here and tyranny well at no least he'd chance. be fit for the new season then you know so uh yeah well, i don't know i don't know i think it's one of those i think the players got to be in the right headspace as well that mm. where are they going to be in december as well Have russia as... been kicked out or didn't they qualify they didn't they got, qualify. They didn't, yeah. They, they didn't make the playoffs. The right? ship. Um, it's quite convenient, yeah. really. It's quite convenient. Yeah. <laughs> so it's been a bit awkward. Actually, Ukraine are actually quite good. Yeah. Maybe this is the way that Putin thought you could get into the World Cup. Is if mm. I just invade Ukraine and then just make them Russia, then Take maybe I get their, <laughs> I just get their position. Well, haven't yeah. Iran or Iraq qualified? They're another. Yeah. Iran have, haven't they? Yeah. Iran yeah. have. They're a good, decent side for the um, that. Uh, what, compared uh, to in the Middle Barnet? East, <laughs> so they're one of the better sides in in that region, aren't they? And, yeah, uh, and, uh, I, mean, I think there's also do I want to say Saudi Arabia have also qualified? Okay. I remember Saudi Probably. Arabia being in the '98 World Cup as well, so they've got a heritage of do you, some degree. Do you remember that? Um, I don't know if you're 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 similar vintage to me, Josh, and Danny just won't even know the name. Do you remember mm. the USA '94? No, actually, I don't think it was. I think it was 2000. The goal from... No, it was USA 94. Saeed Alwaran used to play for, nope. for Saudi Arabia. He basically ran through the entire... I think it was Belgium at the time who were a bit shit then. See the Belgium or Spain? I think it was Belgium. And he, he picked the ball up on the edge of his own box and just ran through the entire team. It's a bit like George Weyer back in the old football Italia days. And he, was that uh, when he was yeah. going to be taking a free kick? Uh, well, I, I what, George Weyer? No, I don't think so. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try... Weyer. I'm going to try and find this goal, and I will I will link it in our chat, and then you can Carl all go is, watch it on mute. Carl is bullying you from afar. Can you ask mm. Chris what's his excuse going to be for France when they lose the quarterfinals again? Well, they're not going to because oh. they're world champions and they're better than England. Castle, so shut your damn mouth! Who won the? Did they win the last World Cup? So I must notice. I take. Yes, they are currently <laughs> they world champions. Yeah. <laughs> Who'd they beat in the final? Croatia. God, that seems like about three World Cups ago. I know. Well, COVID has aged. But... And then Modric just... got oh. player of the tournament. He did. I've just found this goal. I'm going to pop it into the chair. It was against Belgium. God, I, I'm I'm just too good at this, aren't I? Look, someone's you, had a payday. You... We've got, oh, we've got a donation you? from Nick. He's given us five pounds. Farmers I... League. Hashtag <laughs> I, I, guilt... I, I guilted him into that. Uh, Josh, if you just like to watch that goal uh, and I give will. me your feedback, it will, that would be splendid. It will help me refresh my memory of when I was three years old. And, yeah, uh, well, whatever. You know. well, some, of us, some of us are, are, are a bit to bully you. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I'm worth bullying. He's in the same WhatsApp group. He can just bully you there. He no, have to pay money no, no, to he, do he, it. he can't bully me in the WhatsApp group because it's all archived. I don't listen to any of you. That is, that is a goal... It's, it's, it's a, a good level goal. of, I don't know, there was shades of Nawanka in it. Um, it was very calm yeah, yeah. in the way he was taking that And it's tragic that, defending. Oh, absolutely. I mean, he didn't have it's to walk defending. in such a convoluted dribble. He could have just gone in a straight line through that midfield and he, defense. He but that is 4 4 I, 2 I in will, the 90s. 
if, if I remember, chat, then I will get Danny to post the, the link in the show notes so you can have a little look if you've never seen said goal. Just because why not, you know? Why are we talking about all the, the kids World Cup do? football? Oh, oh that was why, a question why, from Josh, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, no, BX Gunner, I don't know if we're allowed to say Germany have good uniforms yet. I think it's still too early. Um, you, oh, 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 I see where you've gone there. Yeah. Uh, it's got, Croatia's got the best kits in history, and then uh, BX Gunnar have to argue Germany. Um, are, we, I mean, are we the bad ones here? Are we the baddies? <laughs> the, 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 the classic Germany, like, Klinsmann era kits were quite nice with the diamond German flag yeah. and the Adidas. That, the first there, was it, no, that. I think it was 94, the one with the big, almost like a, hmm. a collar of diamonds. That was really cool. I like that one. Have we had that as a throwback kit yet for Arsenal? Because that time. was under Adidas, yeah. Bring that the, Adidas, will, <laughs> Adidas will bring that out like next week. Like the next time we lose, that will be there. That's next gonna say that it's our lose expect it to be released. Hey guys, our, check out our new our merch. Kit? Maybe it'll yeah. be their fourth kit because they'll do a load of throwback World Cup kits and it'll be our fourth kit and we'll That's wear it just forward. before we fly out. Yeah, I can't wait. Do we do we want to discuss the new kits while we're on the subject? I'm gonna go and get um, it? yeah, I'm very disappointed that we've not moved to Admiral. Um, <laughs> Admiral, yeah, that's my or issue. Macron, or, or yeah, Macron. or Mitre, or um, Pony. Do you remember Pony? Oh, oh we can't so, have Pony for many reasons. Um, circus Spurs. Yeah, sort of, uh, it, mm, it was Rocky's kids. anniversary today, wasn't it? It was. was it I was going to bring it up at some point. Yeah, twenty-one mm. years. Good luck. Remember that day like it was this afternoon. Terrible. Do you know? Do you know one thing that always bugs me about um, when somebody of such an incredible talent as he, and um, you know, someone who I'm sure we all remember quite vividly, it's the people that actually probably have no idea who he is, but they still put a tweet out saying like, "Oh yeah, you know, what a legend." And it's like, do you even know who that is? And I don't just mean Rocky. I mean every club's got them, haven't they? Like some bloke from Liverpool who played in the 30s or die, and some some pissed up coked up job centre plus scouse wanker or tweet god rest job centre plus uh, you know <laughs> or, 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 like tweet like god rest mickey the the watering can davis or something and you just think mm. you have got no idea who that guy is <laughs> there's always someone isn't there um but i mean it's yeah rocky is what a wonderful man and taken too soon danny you'll 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 have remembered the day i, I just remember it being quite sad in the in the media, wasn't it? When like, outside the ground, there was flowers laid and everything. It's just really sad, wasn't it? Really, really sad. It was absolute shit because we were coming down for the Spurs. I think it was the Spurs game. And I was on the M20, on the uh, M11, just the Contra flow, come on Radio 5. And there was a mm. tear in my eye. And Sean's mum asked me if I was okay. I said, not really. Yeah. It was one of my yeah. favourite players. He was, it was like a Smith Rowe, Saka, all that lot. Proper Arsenal. Proper yeah. Guna. Never wanted to leave. But he had injuries, and so he left and then got to the ground, and no one could believe it. And then even the Spurs fans, during the moment, silence, uh, were quiet, and then gave a round of applause at the end. That and for was... Spurs fans to do that, it's... There was an anniversary in the FA Cup we played Spurs, and they were respectful as well, wasn't it? The Old Trafford, the Pires Vieira semi, semi-final, quarter-final. I think, I think it might be the 10-year anniversary. And, uh, Just look at him. Good-looking yeah. chap. Lovely, lovely man. He was. I often think what he would be like if he was still with us as a pun, uh, a punter, a pundit. I think he'd be seen much in the same light as Ian Wright is. Yeah, he'd be better than Love. half the trash that we've got. Now, that's for sure. <laughs> Loved by all the fans. Um, mm -hmm. Brilliant on TV. He's just got a, a, a kind of personality that'd be fantastic as a punter, pundit, and punter, I, pundit. And I think if he was here today, I think he'd also say that he's quite glad those shorts didn't stay around because they were uh, they were a bit dodge, weren't they? Those shorts. But, they were day. a bit revealing. They were a little but, bit um, short. Yeah, he's missed. And his son, uh, Ryan, does shows on the Gooners podcast with Mike and Andy. And uh, so you can go and see him See him I over there. Very briefly, last time I went up to the game. Yeah. Ryan? Last, yeah, just, just briefly ask, in the, in the trolley. Uh, yeah, he asked for an autograph and a picture. Naturally, I, I declined because I'm you know, away. Not, above not now, that level at this stage. Not now. But, <laughs> no, he's a lo lovely lad. Very humble and uh, yeah, very... Very respectful, very very dignified, just like his dad, basically. But yeah, lovely chap. Only brief, but nice chap. Um, we could spend all night talking about him, but everybody always know, knows about him already, Josh. Um, so we might as well talk about kits. Bit of a bit of a jump, but yeah. what do we think to that, Josh? 
I mean, it took me a while to work out what the uh, design was on the. Mm. Uh, I'm assuming it is going to be our second. Is our away kit? Is the black and gold? Yes. Um, it's interesting. I'll give it that. It's very. Um, I don't know. It's a level of art that I don't necessarily think will resonate with some of our fan base, <laughs> our simpler fan base. But uh, I do like it. Um, I'm not one of those that's going to stand up and throw my toys out the pram because a precedent that was set 40 years after, year. well, yeah, and a precedent that was started 40 years after the club was founded has been ripped up and stamped on a bit like all of those Fair Second away. Amendment wankers. Um, it's like, you can't amend the Constitution, keep the Second Amendment. It's the same with the um, blue and yellow uh, away kit in my mind. Um, it's it's not a precedent uh, that re or a tradition that necessarily needs to always be there because it's you know what it's an away kit um, and the pink kit I quite like it. I it love seems, it. It seems a bit I don't know. It doesn't necessarily seem like a football kit to me, and it's very it's nice. Like a training in that regard. Top, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not something uh, a cleaning like company would issue to all their um, workers. <laughs> That's mainly because my, my cleaner, Stacey, her company is called Pink Boots, and everything she has is pink, so it reminds me of her. I um, I, I like them. I, I'm at, I think I'm actually with Josh a bit on the black kit. Everybody was, I mean, literally swimming in their own you-know-what when it first came out. I love the black and gold. They are classic. You know, every black and gold kit has always been a banger. See Barcelona's recent efforts with that. Mm. Um, I'm just not quite sold on that graphical design not not the afc pattern as such it's just it's a bit too prominent shining through the shirt do you know what i mean if it was a bit more in the background of the shirt I, i'm a bit more um and i hope they do black shorts black socks because do you remember when we had that navy blue with yellow stripes kit recently the mm. adidas one and then we had black shorts it's like navy blue black what why why just make it navy blue navy blue Anyway, so that's my thoughts on that one. The pink one, I love the little detail of the old crest, the little, what are they called? The little bell type shapes. Oh, you know be. what I mean. Yeah. They look like of little the... Christmas trees. Fleur de lis. Yeah. I it's love that. I love that. That's a nice Isn't little it? throwback. No. Um, and the home kit, uh, it's, it's a little, again, the sleeves, it's a bit man, it, like with this sort of half and half red, just make it all white. The, the colour, I like. The fact we have a collar again, I just I'm not sure about that lightning bolt. It's a little bit, I don't know, it's a bit tacky. Um, it's fine again, but again with the home kit, you know me and the home kits. Can we just not have white socks, please? Because I, I, I no. It has don't worry, it's red. red it's red shorts this year, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't mind that. I've got to be red honest. Red shorts with everything. Mind that. I don't mind the red shorts. It's a bit or uh, breaks tradition, but you know. Or if, the yeah. old black kit and just red socks would be funny. Yeah. I mean, I mean, black black shirt with gold shorts would be an interesting mm. look. Gold and, and black socks, maybe. But yeah, can't I can't wait to pick those up in a uh, classic uh, classic football shirts <laughs> clearance in about yes, three years' indeed. time for two pound. For the, the chain <laughs> shorts that were only worn once away at Burnley or something. <laughs> and the only other thing as well is uh, the print is key with that shirt. If they just have the crappy Premier League white print on it, that will ruin it. it. Has to be gold print for me. So if you're going to wear that kit, wear it in the cups where you can have the, the Arsenal gold font on it. So there you go. But yeah, I I, I'm, I don't get my ass in my hand about this tradition thing. I, Yeah, traditionally, we should have a yellow away kit. But and if you're going to go really traditional, we shouldn't have a third kit. So, but yeah, I mean, we've moved with the times, you know, let's, let's, let's embrace change. Let's just only have a home kit. That's it. Done. Kit is one kit. Home just kit. one kit. We picked Plain red, red T-shirt. Yeah, we get that. If we play Man United, well, fuck them. Yeah. That's it. We just don't play Man United or Liverpool ever again. Which I think so. Yeah, yeah, we'd be all right. I'm doing a box. Um, it's just weird that there seems to be no continuity. I don't know if you've, th you've th just said that. There's no continuity between the kits. The badges aren't all the same. The collars aren't all the same. It's like they don't care anymore. I remember the days where all the, the both kits would be mirror images of each other and that i like the fact we've got a pink badge and i like the pink kit the black kit will probably look better from a distance as bet midler probably once sang but <laughs> I, I think all black would have been better i don't like all the arsenal retro banana things in it mm. but unless they do an 8xl i might be buying any of them i'm only a five or a four I after that chicken. banana probably a five <laughs> yeah, yeah so i think it's like somebody them? 
Uh, you I mean, buy them all, Chris. It's at well, what like, point no, are you going to buy them, though? Actually, that's a myth. I broke my tradition of buying every shirt since the year I was born. Uh, last year, I never did end up buying the marble one. Uh, mm. Nor did so I buy the go blue back and one. get it, though, wouldn't you? Well, I mean, yeah, if it comes up cheap, but they're hard to get now. Once they are sort of knocked off at a club, unless you go on a classic football shirt, and I would not mm. pay um, like 80 quid for it. And this Have year, I haven't got the blue on Twitter. Kit. Have I checked what? Sorry. Paul Dawes, D A W E S. He has a uh, load of stuff. I haven't. I can, I can tell you, as I, I'll show you my camera, I do have the uh, current Home and Away and, of course, the uh, shirt Home and Away of the I, World Champions. Uh, I do like course. that custard one. Um, yeah, it is It is nice, um, but I yeah, I mean, I, I will buy them if, if I've got the money, but I wouldn't, you know, sell my family to get them, if you get what I mean. Like, I wouldn't be... Actually, I would because I can't stand my family. But you know what I mean. Um, I don't know. We'll see. And if they're like fifty quid, I, it's a bit of a rip off, isn't it? Oh, they'll definitely be eighty quid because they're yeah. performance wear. I think we'll get to the point where maybe if shirt sales start to slow down, they'll start bringing in stadium kits again. Oh yeah, and those kits. will be. So you'll just get t-shirts instead. Because to be honest, how many people that buy football kits? wear those football kits to play sport in i know yeah, there's someone going to go oh, i do i run in all of mine i was like i'm not talking about you i'm talking about the vast majority I, uh, I, I, so much. For, for anyone yeah. who is a runner try running in a football shirt it's not a fun experience uh, and you look like Jay a bit of a wanker so. i i enjoy it but then you realize you've got if you're an idiot and you've got a name on the back of your shirt someone just shouts oi carlos vela exactly yeah exactly <laughs> and and of course if you are a little bit chunky or a bit slow and you're wearing your team colors and you get crossed by a spurs fan or a man united yeah. then you get extra extra grief so not um, worth it um i agree cool. with um who said it in the chat mr waffles the uh i'd like to see the the, the burgundy the red current make a return at some point i was a big <sighs> fan of that can you imagine picture this like a red current home shirt with gold sleeves. Can you imagine that? Oh, I, be... I can, and I'm not sure how I like it. Oh, I think that would be quite nice, you know. Or just just a little bit of gold detail. Um, mm. that, that kit was a banger. You look back seems at that. Very, um, seems very Roma from when Roma had that kind of spate of doing amazing oh. kits and then dropped off again. Mm, yeah, true. It's kind of yeah, gold yeah. and very dark colours. They're with New Balance now, aren't they? And I don't really like their kits. They're a bit mm -hmm. cheap, but yeah. No, I'm a big fan of the Burgundy, and I think yeah, if they did a, if they did a Burgundy um, home shirt again, even Burgundy with white sleeves would kind of work. And then uh, maybe Burgundy and white hoop socks. Oh, well, nice. how long is uh, how long is our contract with Adidas? And yes, yeah. uh, when can they get that to roll in? Well, they'd have to buy it off Nike, couldn't they? It depends if Nike mm. owns the uh, design for the red current as well. There's, there's a few there's a few bangers next year of various teams that I've seen leaked already. Spurs' new kit is traditionally shite as usual. Uh, <laughs> it generic. looks like a gown you wear when you do an operation. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's just crap. Um, yeah. But yeah, Spurs like, are the only kit, uh, the only team that I've seen to manage to put together a terrible black and gold as well. They did a few years ago. They did, didn't they? Because it was mm. kind of like off. Yeah, off, they did um, a kind of what the true color of gold is, so it was mm, more like a caramel color, kind of like shitty diarrhea color, which mm. is quite apt, really. Um, they yeah. just need a slice of lasagna across the back, and <laughs> just on the shorts, like, yeah, just across the back of the shorts, yeah. Or, like, you know, uh, like occasionally, if you have had an awkward night and maybe you had white boxes, there's just that skid up the back, that would be like, yeah. <laughs> You're getting off topic here, get back onto football. Um, Sorry. Got a couple of things here. Uh, Cy wants to talk about the Ozil and Nacho thing. Do we do we want to move on to that yet? And Mark uh, wants to know yeah. about Bruno Gomez. Plus... Talk about Bruno Gomez. I can fill Mark in. Second. I think he actually wants to know about Lucas Paqueta, doesn't he? Or does he? Or is it a bit of both? I'll cover Mark in a minute. We can we can talk the uh, the goggly eyed wonder if you like. Yeah, we'll keep it on Arsenal before we go to a. Um... Oh, I was trying to think of a Newcastle legend, Peter Beardsley. Peter Beardsley Wonderland. We'll give him a decent think, one. Oh, I don't think we can use Peter Beardsley, can we? Isn't he a little bit of a? Oh, is he cancelled now? I think he's. Oh. I think he's cancel culture. Yeah. What about Keggy? Keggy. Keggy. Keggy's fine. Yeah, yeah. We yeah, can use I'd Keggy. love I'd, it. I'd. Love I would it. love it. I would no, love I... it if that was a podcast under Keggy's name. Or, or go DJ and like go Warren Barton or I don't know John <laughs> Beresford or or Gavin Peacock. Remember Gavin Peacock? Oh yeah. 
Danny will remember. There's one. Got... Joe Willock Wonderland. Why not? We've got one of our go. own up there. Done. There you go. Uh, uh, Philippe Albert with the best song Philippe in Albert. football. Apart from the Tuesday Club, where they had that, um, we've got Erdegaard number eight. That song they someone wrote in with was absolutely yeah, stunning. it was quite good, wasn't it? Yeah, that was yeah, quite good. amazing. Yeah. But that Philippe Albert one, Philly, Philippe Albert, because everybody knows his name, they'd <laughs> sing it to the tune of Roof at the Bear. Fantastic. Although Newcastle, I think I don't know the full lyrics, but they still have the best song for a player do you remember happy bay when they had him and they'd be like Ooh. sunday monday happy bay <laughs> that was genius that was good that was good um and the best chant ever was um do you remember when fc of manchester were relevant i don't know if they still are mm. and there's a FC YouTube... united yeah that's the one there's a youtube clip of their fans and um it's like the stand and there's a, a couple of police officers walking past uh, and i think they were losing and the police officers walk past and and then you just see all of them lean forward. They're like, we pay your council tax and we buy your <laughs> fucking hats. <laughs> just, that was that was good. I, I, I approved of that one. So there you nice. go. Anyway, Ozil. Uh, um, yeah, Ozil. Oh, well, should we start about Nacho? Because Nacho was the one that I think kind of was the catalyst. He spoke to 442 <laughs> during the international break or at the beginning of it. And what yeah. Man? What an interesting bit of tidbit he had, isn't he? Mm. Um, Danny, can you read? Did you read it? Oh, the uh, yeah, I did because Nacho it was... Monreal one, not the Ozil one that came in the Athletic today. <laughs> no, the the other one that was um, 101 goals or something like that. I read it on. It was about four bits oh. of information, but an entire page full of shit. I think the gist of it was that Monreal said he he had a problem with everybody. <laughs> That's and I, luck we didn't know that. I mean, you have to look at I think the 2014 FA Cup final. I think when we beat Hull three two, and then when when they scored, he he carried on walking back to the centre circle, and and then people brought up other videos. There's a whole thread of it about two or three months ago, and there was another one where they scored. I mentioned this the other day, and then there was, uh, I think it was, uh, Ozil might have scored, and there was Sanchez with him and two other players, and then Ozil looks around and goes, well, where's everybody going? And Sanchez says, I don't know, because they weren't celebrating with him. And you think, mm. even back then, we were thinking, something's not quite right here, but it's spoiled brat syndrome, isn't it? I think it was uh, won the World Cup, didn't know what to do with himself, no motivation left. Um Per Mertesacker said it. That's the reason he retired so early. Because he was like, I just can't bother. It's fucking won it. Where do I go from here? Just going to win the Champions League. Or maybe he'd won it already. It's just, yeah, completely demotivated. And I think one of the things that has really helped and probably turned a lot of people who were still backing up Ozil was the fact that he'd fallen out of Arsene Wenger as well. I've seen a lot of accounts that you know, even Ozil things, I think, is thinking about uh, changing his handle after it found out that he'd fallen out with Papa Venga because... Yeah, and that's almost that impossible the, to do. Yeah, exactly. You have to be a grade A dickhead to fall out with Venga, I think. So, yeah, Chris, what did you think about it as well? Just, It's just hard to tell, isn't it? Like... It, I don't know. I think the the trouble with Meza is like his talent was was undeniable, but it's just it. I almost I I, I can almost see the parallels between him and and Neymar. It, I know it's a weird comparison, but he's going to have one of those careers that you look back it, when when our kids kids or whatever, and they're going to say, "Oh, do you remember that Ozil guy?" And I feel like the same will be said with with Neymar, and that they'll go, "He had everything." when he could be bothered or when his attitude was right or when he wasn't partying or when he wasn't dishing mm. the dirt. And I, d I do think that Arsenal's treatment of him at the end wasn't the best, but then you also wonder why that was the case. Like, you know, how many years did, did Arsene uh, cover for players who were being shits behind his back? You know, the, the shit he took for RVP when he stabbed him in the back, you know, even the Cesc thing, whether you believe you believe what you want to believe, I still think it's a load of waffle that he went on strike. I just, just think it is. But, um, you know, whatever you believe, like Arsene would always go to bat for players. And, and to a degree, Arteta does as well, you know, to a degree. But, um, it, yeah, I just, I just think with Meza... I think somebody tweeted earlier on today and I kind of agree with it. It's like one manager, you can sort of understand it when it's like two, three managers, you start mm. starting thinking, actually, is there a bit more about the guy 
than than the managers he's worked under now? Is it a bit about him? And I do think he his interests off the pitch haven't helped either. So I just think he's a bit of a flawed genius. And most genies, if that's the plural, are flawed in one way or another. Um, see the Oscars. So, you know, <laughs> just I just think wherever he goes, a bit of controversy follows. And um, mm. in a way, Arsene Wenger was the right manager for him at the time. And then it all went a bit wonky, didn't it? So. And it has certainly um, gone wonky in Fenerbahce, which I think mm. was the other thing that was being discussed and was um, broadcast from the Athletic. Uh, I think do, a couple do, of days do you know? Ago. Do you know the bit? Do you know the only bit that sort of rubs me up the wrong way? Do you remember when we had the the, the bastards, as Danny called them, um, mm. the the German alliance, if you will, uh, and we had Klaas and Ash Mustafi, mm. um, Erzaland. There was two other. One of them was Gunduzi, and there was another one, wasn't there? But um, Socrates. I, Socrates. I I wonder if because Gunduzi was quite close to us, or I think he still is. Mm. Um, and whether you like him or or you don't, he's now a full French international. He's got his first goal of the night. He's been very good for Marseille. And I just wonder, had he ever aligned himself more in mm. the Saka Smith Rowe sort of area? I wonder if Arteta might have given him another opportunity because the talent's there. Mm. I think whatever you think, but. I think it was just the fact that anybody that was tainted by the Ozil touch, I think yeah. Mikel went, no, not for me. It's definitely that that you could see. That it's, mm. um, yeah, you say that about any person. You say if they didn't have that set of friends, they could have been president or whatever. Yeah. They could have gone on to great things. And I think Influence. it is exactly that kind of thing with Gwendozi that, yeah, he got into the wrong crowd. And there, as you say, Chris, the talent is there for if a manager wants to try and bring direction to his game, they can. I think what the great thing is, is under San Paoli. So yeah. positioning isn't necessarily no. the uh, top attribute you need to have when your uh, formation is just, OK, here's all the magnetic dots, pass them all to me. And they just chucks them at the whiteboard and says, right, yeah. th there we go. That's what happened. And then scrolls it again, rolls it out on another place. And that's where you're playing. Although, six minutes. strangely, Marseille's return to form mm. is because he listened to his players and has actually played a more structured Four, sort of four three three version <laughs> so boring, in, a, in a weird way yeah. it's like yeah but um yeah you're right yeah. i just i don't know and and when nacho monreal is calling you a cunt you you probably <laughs> are a cunt let's be honest i mean nacho mm. is he's the most uncontroversial character we've ever had isn't he like mm. just completely chilled kind of guy i imagine really... imagine uh santi was just like no don't do it don't do yeah, it nacho don't do it, don't yeah. do it. <laughs> just yeah, yeah, just came out and had to say it because I think it and clearly when, shows. You... Okay. Sorry, go on. I was going to say there's players that when they come out and say things, you'd listen to them because you feel mm. like they they haven't really got a reason to say otherwise. And I think Nacho is one of those. He was so I'd say average, but not. Mm. He was consistent. It, consistent. It's like him and Bakri Sanya. They were really good mm. at what they did. <laughs> Like consistently, yeah. really, really never good. kicked up a fuss outside. Was always spoke well of people. So left in good grace. Came in yeah. when we needed him at that time of most when he came in from Malaga, mm -hmm. and and I think as well with with um, someone like someone like that you just mentioned, Santi Cazorla. There, like mm -hmm. when you really look back at it, forget the honours. And I know you can't technically forget the honours, but if you take the trophies away, would I, I would argue Santi Cazorla is as good a footballer as as Meza was. Do you know what I mean? And and look at the difference in how they're regarded as people. And, and I know That's Santi had an adventure a lot. Well, that's what, what I mean. Santi have been without nearly losing a leg. Mm. Exactly. Exactly. Well, he would have mm. played at the very top. We would never have got him, I don't think. If he, I mm. think he, if he had stayed fit when he came to Arsenal, he'd have been gone. He'd have gone on to another bigger club. I don't think we would have got Ozil. More. I think we would have probably waited and got Sesk the season after. Mm. Yeah, very that's true. probably what happens. Is Santi stays at number ten? Mm. I run he, that. He had he had everything. I've I've seen probably like mm. you two. I've seen many players in the flash in my life. Santi had just everything for a guy who's like my height, if not smaller, mm. which is very small, as everyone knows in the chat. Um, you know, balance. He had a, he had, he was deceptively quick for for a kind of squat, chunky little fella. Um, shooting, vision, passing. He could put a tackle in. He was a leader. Like he just had everything. And you just think, like, imagine if we'd have had the midfield of a, a Pomp Sesk, a Pomp Vieira, and a Pomp Santi. Can you imagine that? Oh, 
like Loki puts here, and Santi played the away games. I've just been yeah. looking at Ozil's <laughs> time at Fenerbahce, the number of away games he misses. He's not missed many games other than when he has a, a whole string of games out injured like he has for, as recently. Yeah. But when it came to outside the M25, he didn't want to know, did he? No. Can you can you imagine, because obviously we, we've never been privileged enough to to have been part of behind the scenes at a football club, but can you imagine the amount of HR issues in football clubs? And I know we see the polished Amazon documentaries mm. that we're having part of now, but we're never going to see the guts. Are we? I'd love to see the the bits that stay on the cutting room floor, the bits that, that people could... And even those books like Secret Footballer, they never really revealed the juicy stuff, did they? Did we find out who the Secret Footballer was? It's Dave yeah. Kitson, isn't it? Is it Dave Kitson? Yeah, it was a championship yeah. player, wasn't it? It's yeah. Dave United and West Ham and Reading, oh, possibly. Yeah, I think Redding. it was... Yeah, I think they said it was Dave Kitson. Uh, and then it turns out that it's Dave Kitson plus. Plus others. Farms, yeah, because he now farms it out. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's a good concept. It was like Big Brother. It started quite well, and then it went off a cliff. But yeah, certainly did. Uh, someone asked yeah. a question here. It is uh, a Sai asked. Sai says, "Danny, did you think of the hashtag Bundesliga bastards after uh, after Özil <laughs> left, or did it include Özil? Özil was the reason I started it because mm. uh, he was the. Uh, so it's all come out now. He was the one that was the main problem. It was the Özil gang, and like mm. uh, like Chris was saying, he took the younger players under his wing. I mean, you got a World Cup winner there. One of the mm probably theoretically one of the greatest players to play in the premier league in the last decade should have been but um yeah but didn't didn't do it now carl wants to know speaking of roma is maitland niles coming back yes because they don't want him <laughs> that's they have moved uh, him around a bit he's played right yeah, back and now and they're gonna build and now move him around out the door because they just don't want him now i think jose i think was saying he wanted him for a bit and then completely changed his tune and it's a bit like well yeah not so hot on this player now well, um, do we know why or do we assume why uh yeah because he's not good enough to play in central midfield mm. uh, any reasonable level he'll come back don't worry and uh he'll play a pre-season game against a championship level team like he normally does for arsenal and then everyone will be like play him in midfield again you're like but that was watford and watford are, are shit they're like, oh, I'll play him every week. We're like, We're Liverpool next week. Yeah, play him in the midfield. He was great against Watford and Norwich. We played a game this week, didn't we? Uh, we had a friend behind closed we doors did. friendly against Brentford, beat them 4 1. Lacazette hat trick. It was Brentford <laughs> B. It was Brentford oh. B team. Um, it's actually it in the big games, you know? Yeah. It's an interesting concept, Brentford B. They don't, um, that's their youth academy, they but they're not part they? of any. It's also yeah. a play on words, isn't it? The Brentford it is. B. <laughs> it is Clever. indeed. Um, but but yeah. trick, that's got to be good for Lacazette, hasn't it? It's good, it's good for confidence, isn't it? It doesn't matter yeah. what level you do it at. It's you know it's a competitive game as so such. And, you know, w whether you like or you don't like the options we've got up front, um, he's the only striker we've got who gives a shit right now in terms of actual out-and-out -out strikers. Yeah. So, um, you know, if that does him, if that gets him a bit more confidence and, and it means he puts one you know, inside the inside the goal next time, then you, it's worth it, isn't it? Yeah, he seems like a guy that just needs to get his eye in um, because we're not necessarily creating as much in regular games. It sounds like if you you've got to be some player to yeah. to be doing that role and still score goals, haven't you? Yeah, mm. and and, and sure. when he was when he was at Leon, he, his his numbers were very good, but he would go through spells where he wouldn't, you know, consistently score for a couple of weeks, and then he he'd find his eye again, and then they'd be mm. a bit more consistent. So. And like I've always said, and I'll continue to keep saying, he hasn't got Nabil Fakir. And he, if anything, he's actually playing the Fakir role that he had at Leon. Mm. Like he's I playing like he was the one who made him look magical. Yeah, it's like Josh said though, he's he's playing as a a deep lying assisting centre forward and he's feeding the young, sort of quicker, energetic players around him. So um but yeah, I you know, it'd be interesting to see what happens with his with his future because i think we will offer him a deal but i think he's got every right to sort of say actually we have you know? haven't we we did offer him a deal is that official is that, I've, I've heard yeah different i thought we'd offered him one year <laughs> extension and he mm. said i want three years and i think we were both correct in him asking for three years and us only offering one yeah because because a player who asks for three years he's asking for three years on the premise that he could leave after one isn't he it's like you know, give me it's three years. That, so that or it's I want three years of secure contract because I know that's I'm what I mean. Probably, yeah. yeah. 
because he yeah. know because the other problem you've got is you you're not just trying to convince him because I, I don't think he has any issues staying with us i think he's quite happy at the club he's quite happy in the area um the the problem is he he is at his age he's going to want to play mm. and we're clearly going to go out in the summer and buy you know a forward certainly a forward that we're going to look at mm. being a starting forward or we're going to try anyway um you know would he really want to stay on as as a backup striker Alba's gone and he's finally getting the starts and now and and Leon will probably have a little go to get him back mm. in the summer and if they don't get him somebody in France will have a sniff well um, they tried in January didn't they well they made an inquiry I think that's yeah. as far as it went and yeah, but no yeah. one's going to pay him the what's he on 150 grand a week with us but I don't think no. it's about how much wages he gets if he went back to Leon. No. That's not no. the reason he's going back to Leon is because he get a payday there. Yeah, he goes back. there, going goes back home. back home, and they know, and he'll know that you know puts in two different performance, two decent seasons for them. They'll mm. probably offer him a new deal. It'll be a bit like Ben Yedder when he went to Spain and then went back to Monaco. Um, mm. You know, he had a really good time in goal scoring in France, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Yeah, but but he was doing really well at Sevilla. I think he scored at Old Trafford from memory when he was mm. playing there against Man United, and he was attracting interested sort of like big clubs by Munich, the likes. Um, but he said he wanted to go back to France because he wanted to be back in a country that he sort of felt was home, and he wanted to. It wasn't that he didn't want to test himself because he he'd already proven that he could score goals in Spain, but he just wanted to go back to where he felt comfortable. And Monaco was at the time paying a lot of money and. And now he's he's still a full French international and he's still getting regular game time. So I think Laka would do the same because Leon are probably going to sell Dembele in the summer because his, his contract is coming up and he's, his value's high now. Um, and they haven't really got another striker unless you... Tito Cadawere is not ready to be the first full-time. They sold Depay, obviously. So, yeah, I, I it's on paper it makes sense for him to go home. Um, my worry then is if we if we blow our load on you know, striker X, that's fine. But Inketi is mm. going to go as well. We, I think we probably need two strikers if Lacka goes. Mm. Or we convert Martinelli. But then Martinelli oh. should be starting every week. So how do you... We definitely that? need two strikers. I think that's that's a given because I don't want Balogun coming back either mm. in the sense of I still want him contracted by the club. But back but on another, the no, yeah. yeah, He's another he's, loan player. He's proven, hasn't he, in this loan spell at Middlesbrough that he needs mm. consistent regular game time. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, England under 21 so he's been fantastic as well he's got four yeah. goals in seven games or something or some number like that I, I what I would have loved us to have done this summer is is gone out and bought the marquee centre forward and then bought an Ollie Watkins mm-hmm. type but not not the Ollie Watkins that's now at Villa because he's going to want to start every week mm-hmm. the Ollie Watkins when they got him at, at Brentford where you look at him and you go yeah mm-hmm. consistent goal scorer young um, potential English with good sell on value just mm. breaking through, or like when he, uh, Ivan Tony came through at Wigan before Brentford got him, like that kind of. I think it's Wigan, wasn't it? I think it was Peterborough. Peterborough, sorry, you're right. You're um, gosh. So yeah, yeah. Th- but but the trouble is in the modern era, you know, we're in 2022. You know, Arsenal are not going to go and buy Chris Kiwomia when he was in former Ipswich mm. like we did back in the day. Now we're always oh, that was just desperation. Yeah. That was. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we're going after Ben Barrington. We'll put it that way because exactly. that's, that's the. Just, there's plenty that's the of. Point. I think that's the other thing of goals in the championship definitely don't translate as well, Mitrovic. especially for the money. <laughs> well, yeah, Mitro's yeah. going to smash the uh, but, smash but then, the record set by Tony. Five goals, season. thirty goals. Five goals, thirty goals up then, and down every but year. Then on on the flip side, and you know, if Danny, I'm sure you've got the button ready to push. To, Chris talks about French football, but hmm. there is players like Hugo Ekitike at, at Rams who. You know, Newcastle sniffed around in the summer and uh, in the winter window, and he basically said, "I actually quite like." There you go. Um, mm-hmm. He said, "I'd quite like to stay in France," and he wanted to. He wants to see out the project with with uh, Stade de Rome, and he's going to stay. But he did also say, "I'm aware of my value. I'm aware that that my sale could help fund this club for years to come, and in the summer we'll see what offers come." So he's he's maybe the right age, the right profile. Mm-hmm. He kind of reminds me a bit of when Anelka left PSG. You know, there's a potential to be a really good striker there, but he's young enough that you couldn't command minutes. And then there's the lad at um, PSV, isn't there? Gakpo, is it? The lad who's coming through or who'd been linked in the last few days? Uh, Cody Gakpo. I yeah. don't know if you say it, Gakpo. 
he, I know, but do you know who had an excellent stats before he came as well? Jack Most of them. Yeah, Jack Yeah, Jack and Bash. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, Davy Klassen. Um, I had to think back. I think the last player that came out of the Eredivisie and has hit similar figures of an attacking player, because we can't really think of Ziyech. I don't think Ziyech is... He's close to it, but it's Wilfred Boney. If someone, can f- if someone can find me an Eredivisie straight signing out of the Eredivisie to the Premier League that hit the ground running better or uh, between Wilfred Boney and today, then I'd be shocked. Let, let me chuck four names at you from Eredivisie mm. history. Jan Venegor yeah. of Hessling. Do you remember him? Celtic legend. legend. Yep. Hey. Um, <laughs> there you go. Van Hoydonk, of course. He's the most famous Celtic legend. legend. <laughs> um, and I'm going to throw two absolute belters at you. Alfonso Alves. Who ah, was, was, was absolutely wretched. I wonder if he's still their record signing. Probably. And he's the he best scored on his lot. debut for them against Man United, I think. Or yeah, scored a couple did. of goals. And then he, you nothing. Know which, you know he's which a, absolute great um, talent spotter signed him as well? Gareth Southgate. Old Gareth Southgate. There you go. <laughs> and the best one of the lot, uh, BX Gunnar says, Dirk Coit. Now I can beat that, BX. Uh, Mattia Kesman, do you mm. remember who went oh, to Chelsea? Chelsea. Scored all yes. those goals, and mm. to be fair, he he had the build of a good striker. Mm. He looked like a player, and he was so bad at Chelsea, like he just could not. Yeah, so that but so but then you could also say Rude Van Horseface. I mean, he's an absolute monumental thundercunt, but he was a hell of a striker. Did he come straight from PSV, or did they get him from Hamburg? No, he was from PSV for memory. Oh, yeah, because he, yeah, because he, um, he, he went, went. He went straight uh, there because he got that injury, didn't he? Van when they were Roy. Sign him. Um, oh no, yeah. Van der Sroy. Yeah, he was PSV, and then he uh, got injured. Had a, he could hear it in the video. He screamed. He that's right. I remember that. Yeah. Then he but, came but to Man Ferguson, United. But Ferguson said that he would still sign him, didn't he? He was like, because he, ta- he was so talented, and he, they put the deal off for a year, didn't they? And said, "We'll, we'll take you when you're back fit." And then they are on the country. Real Madrid, then Hamburg. And he, as I say, he I'm, was. I'm sticking back. Uh, can I just say on Luis Suarez joined Liverpool 2011. Wilfred yeah, Boney came straight in 2013. Still right. <laughs> Yari Litman and Swansea <laughs> legend. He went to Vitesse, didn't he, Wilfred Boney, after that? Uh, no, he came, oh, he came from Vitesse. He came from Vitesse, that's right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the Kakapo, or whatever his name is, I'm never yeah. going to remember it. Is it 20 games, seven goals, 13 assists? He's, he's, he's not. He's not he's he wouldn't not be Glenn Held, would he? No, he, he he's got he's he's got the build, hasn't he, Josh? Like he's a wiry, mm. you know, he's a wiry, attack-minded, wide player. Cuts it. He's a very Arteta type of player. He's got Man United written all over him. He's, a bit, he's, he's yeah. one of those that I would. You can see how great everyone's lauding the Ajax side as well, mm. and look at all the players that have come out of that. Ajax side that made the semi and they just haven't necessarily translated that to there's something that obviously seems about obviously I'm talking about Ajax so that's a microcosm in itself of a very exacting system I um, prefer I prefer the Benfica lad Darwin Nunes, Nunes. Is a, I, different I, player he's, though Striker. he's a different Huge. player but he's, he's but six he's one. A, yeah, he's a burly, strong, mm, yeah, powerful. Yeah, yeah. He, but, he's not going to fuck around. Touch of the Giroux about him with his, and, his kind and of. And he's field. Uruguayan, so Uruguayan, which means obviously he's going to be an absolute ass bandit. You know, he is going to be an asshole. So, I but I like and and fantastic hair, which we all know is crucial in the signing. But um, yeah, he he because he's only is he twenty? I think he's twenty, isn't it? Twenty twenty one. Yeah, not much 20, more. 20, 20, um, I, I just like I just like his profile, and I, I feel like he won't get bullied. Whereas I think Gakpo. Mm. He's got that kind of build that it will go one of two ways. He'll either get Reyes out of the Premier League within a year, God rest his soul. He'll either get kicked up and down the league for, for 12 months and then come good, or he'll go full Cabo de Oro and nobody will ever hear him again. It's yeah. a bit... Um, I was going to name a, a name a player in France as well that I was going to say might be similar. Um, and, oh God, which teams he play for? It's, I want to say he's Ghanaian, winger. Plays on the left, cuts on his oh. right. He might be at Ren. Oh, do you mean Sulemana? Yes, but he doesn't Sulemana play with Sulemana on the back of his shirt, does he? he plays with no, his first name uh, on the back Kamil. of his shirt. Kamal, 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 Sulemana. Yeah, 
Yeah, again, similar profile uh, to Gakpo, but a bit more, mm. again, a bit more hefty. Yeah, he, that was the one I thought we'd look at. Um, and he's another cuts in mm. from left and right, and you mm. know, yeah, uh, it Kul- seems Kuladin, like Kuladin, isn't it? Is it Kuladin? I can't remember. I'm going to look it up. But yeah, Aside I know that FIFA, I'm definitely... if that helps. <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> I'm sure it's um, Camel De- Camel Dean Suleiman. There you go, Camel Dean. Yeah, and that's what he has on his shirt. Yeah, and yeah. the. Um... Uh, yeah, he got dubbed this week the next Messi. So, not Messi, next uh, Mbappe. So, you know, that's, oh, well, um, it's, it's bad, bad, isn't it? yeah, that's unfortunate. Sorry, for he's it. off to Madrid, isn't he? Mbappe, or uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I think, I think, yeah, yes. I think it's pretty likely. Yeah, would, would you take nine? They're gonna sign um, oh, Dembele. Yeah. Would, would you, would either of you take a gamble? I can't believe I'm gonna say this. Would you take a gamble on Eden Hazard? No, have you for seen what? his goal stats? He I scored mean, the... more goals in half a season from Christmas to the end of the season, his last season at Chelsea, than he has in the three years that he's been at oh, Real yeah, Madrid. The, Madrid's been a write off, but he's, mm. a, he's an injury prone. That's you know. the only worry, isn't it? It's the injury. We don't need uh, we don't need any more fake, fake Galacticos. I'd say if I was going to go for a Hazard, I'd go after Thorgan. Mm. Yeah. Put it that I'm way. just curious. I, I just, just wouldn't bother. More versatile. With, um... it, it appears to be a no in the chat, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I think he I, is. No, I think he. I'm not saying uh, I would. Definitely, I've seen a link come to say that Hazard was linked to Arsenal, but it just, mm. just look at the profile of players we're trying to get. And well, it's it's sniffing around Chelsea's bins again, isn't it? It is. Like, uh, it's know? it's going around the back. Someone else has picked something out of Chelsea's bins. You know, had a we bite of it. that sandwich, gone. Oh, that's fucking disgusting. Chucked we it on the floor, and then we go and pick up that sandwich and go. I'll give it a bit of a go. I'll give that a go. It's been in the paddle. Uh, still, yeah. we've, we've refried still it. We put it yeah. in the fridge for a day, re- reheated it, and hope for the best. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, like, I, I, like I personally wouldn't, but you know, he says he, he'd rather sign Mickey Hazard. <laughs> <laughs> Or, or uh, William. Oh, Mervyn's already just said that. Yeah, get William. Yeah, yeah there's yeah. a very smart thing that might happen as well with um old what's going up at Everton. They got no money. Yeah. So they're gonna oh, have this to, is a surprise. They're gonna have to chop in one of their strikers in the summer because no one else is gonna buy anybody. I, I wouldn't shouldn't want, laugh. I wouldn't have Rickelson. Well no, Richard, you'd love him. Richarlison. Oh Richarlison. No, if you want a oh, bastard in your team. His... He can't if you want a bastard in your team, prick, can he? He's he's the type of player. If he's your player, you love him. Mm-hmm. Anyone else, you think he's an absolute weapon. He he yep. is, you know, rolls around, does that flicking hand thing. Mm. Oh, he's a cretin. I can't stick him. Does Talented, it top when? But... Does it top when the ball rolled into Son and then he went down like he'd been shot? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but how the FA don't do anything. That that is the perfect example. To, to a situation, make an example of him and go. You're getting a ban for that because we, that ball barely touched you. You we, fell we down. We can't. We can't say on air what Son is, but we all know, don't we, Steve? God rest his mm. soul. We oh, know Steve what, shouting it from the crowd. We all know what Son is. So uh, yeah, we'll talking of Steve, I've, I've come because you lot are all fucking useless for the last two years. I've contacted Vivian, and she's going to do the wording for his plaque outside the stadium, and I need someone to get hold of Dave's family. And let them pick because the amount of times I've asked you lot, the plaque has been paid for, both of them. And uh, you, I go, what should I do? What should we? I'm not picking it, so I'm gonna let the families pick it. So That's hopefully, nice. maybe this summer we might have Steve's plaque and Dave Hollick's plaque um, next to each other outside oh, the well, Emirates. Yeah. Well, Danny, I can't believe it's taken you two years to sort it out, you lazy fucker. <laughs> you lazy shit. <laughs> How dare you? That's our legacy mm. down the drain. Uh, oh, Carl's been asking some more things. He's very active today, isn't he? he is, don't, let me, don't let me forget uh, Mark's question as well, because I will. It's I will saved in the, yeah, in the star box. Cool. Uh, so, yeah, Carl's asked if Watford should go down. Should we bid for Dennis? Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Dennis. Seven million, would it be? Ten million? They, they paid three million mm. for Dennis when not, they got him. Would you not? Because um, yeah. there's there's three at Watford, isn't there? There's Dennis, there's Ismail Assar, and there's the other one, isn't Hernandez, there? Hernandez, the one that scored the bicycle kick against us. Chucho, yeah. I don't know. Um, again, are they good enough to step up? I don't know. Assar, I like, but mm. he's he's got a bit more miles in the park. Okay? He's a bit more experienced at Premier League or in, in English football. Um, I don't know. I, I'd be more tempted to have a little sniff around the Palace boy if you were going to go that end. What's his name? The, uh, the French, the French one. The one. No. The French one. Elise. 
As Alisa, yeah, yeah, Alisa. So yeah, he's French. Yeah. Yeah, um, is he? He is, he's playing for France on the 19s, isn't he? Alisa. Yeah, he, oh, and then well, England, England are trying to get him at the moment. Yeah, he, I was um, going to say, he's got English Patrick, parents. Just, yeah, and Patrick Vieira was um, very, should we say, diplomatic when he said he's not <laughs> trying to influence the decision that Alisa uh, makes I, for his, uh, yeah, for the choice of national Patrick. team that he has, but yeah. Do you, know, do you know what I love about Patrick Vieira as well? Is that this will be a see, long list? Well, there, there's many <laughs> things, but um, you you look at the like ex footballers of his generation that are now managers like Lampard mm. and Gerrard and. Uh, Ugh, can I quickly but, just um, say that you've put you said Lampard's a manager? I'd like to have that well, struck from the record. That's a, that's a stretch. <laughs> Even that's Gareth long. Southgate, you know, before his time. But you look at those sort of managers; they're quite trim. You know, they're all immaculately turned out. Paddy's had Paddy's had a few burgers, hasn't he? He's 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 enjoyed his retirement, and I love the fact he's rounding that he's rounding he, out nicely because he always had quite a round face, but he's quite a chunky chap. But you just know that on a training ground, he takes numbers. Oh. Like you just know that he's still got it. Like that, You're that, not gonna, he's he's gonna, one of them that he's, he's running. Away. Yeah, yeah. In training, he's there. Uh, Royale with cheese in one hand and yeah. just dribbling through the players, just doing key cuts with the other yeah. one, like in the queue. A Wanzi World Cup. <laughs> but, but then, but then, and you also know with Paddy, um, that time when he actually went radio ran at the referee at the end of the game, like you know that because he's a very, I, I never forget, like when you see interviews with him and that famous interview with Roy Keane, he's very softly spoken. He's a very, mm. very sort of you know African French because he was so, he's Senegalese um, growing up, and um, he's very softly spoken. He's very articulate, and even Henri, I think, is more of an aggressive talker. Vieira is very quiet and quite shy. But you just know when it somebody does something wrong in training, you will come down on that player like a ton of bricks. Like he's got that thing that it's it's different to Klopp. He's got the stature of Klopp. Yes. But if one of them came towards you with a face of thunder, which one mm. scares you more? The oh, angry, Vier shouty man or the quiet? Vieira would guy. Vieira would slide the knife just into your windpipe or oh, while you sleep, and then he would mm. loom over you and laugh while he did it. Whereas Keane would come in like. <laughs> With a, a like a concrete block over your head and go, you fucking, and that would be it. The error would just do it quietly and slide mm. into the night and not get caught. Is is, yeah. I'm not. I'm not actually just for legal reasons. I'm not suggesting Patrick Vieira is a serial killer, by the way. But um, yeah, a silent assassin. Mm. Uh, well, just yeah. I'm just, obviously Palace next for Arsenal. I hope he has an awful off night. But mm. he's he's a good manager and he he was always good at Nice. Uh, and he's done his time. He did it America to New was over with them. Um, New York, what called New York City. Yeah, he's 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 do doing think, his apprenticeship. When Arteta leaves us for Man City or Barcelona, do you think Paddy could just slip right in there? It depends. It depends when, doesn't it? About mm. two years. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've got a theory that Arteta will actually end up at Bayern Munich one day. You know, I think he might go the pet route in terms. I of also doing don't. Germany. I would also say if Guardiola leaves and Paddy's doing a decent job, then mm. X Man there's. Yeah. Ex City Group oh, manager. Yeah. yeah, good point. Yeah, yeah. they've he's really managed. Basically, um, there'll be two of them. Quarter. He's really managed a quarter of the Man City Group sides, hasn't he? Yeah, exactly. It's he's also got Melbourne to do. I tell you what, as well, I I wouldn't be surprised if PSG had a little sniff around Vieira if he if he got to the end. Of oh, the they season. could get bloody bloody Moses in to manage that club, and they still win, fail to win the bloody yeah, Europe it's, Champions it's, League. It's it's hard to disagree with that. Yeah. Although I still oh, think yeah. Conte's going to go there, which will be hilarious if he does. If you had to, this is a uh, um, Chris. In one sentence, what do PSG have to do to win the Champions League? Uh, delete the club and start again. Fair enough, I agree be... with that. Um, what, what PSG needs to do to win the Champions League is get get rid of Leonardo, the sporting director. Um, El Khalifi, the owner, needs to keep his fucking business out of team affairs. They need to sack that fraudulent Argentinian fuckwit of a manager who can't manage his own dinner absolutely overrated yeah um they need to get rid of neymar um they need stop to... trying to be the french galacticos and just do it properly yeah. and they need i need to play some of the the talented young players do you remember christopher and kunku and i said a few years back he's going to be a star how well he midfield, come... big midfielder yeah come to leipzig absolutely brilliant now um psg will always be hated because of their money uh, and because that they they brand their club very well, and that's why they make money, and you can't knock them for that because Man United did it. You know, clubs have, are being smart with the money, but the problem with PSG is they the, the reason they're hated so much is they're very sore losers. Um, they've got some very dislikable players, 
um, and they don't give the opportunity for the younger, talented players to come through. Um, and they feel like they're bigger than everyone else. They're trying to buy instant success. And um, unfortunately, it doesn't work. And I hate to say it, but if I think if I was managing that club or I was owning that club and Barcelona said, look, we quite like Leo to come home, I would let him go. Um, I would ship Neymar out. Um, and then I would do everything I could to keep him back, even though they, they can't, I don't think now. And I put Di Maria back in the side and you go for a left winger and you start again. Because like you said, Danny, you can't you can't just have attack and no defenders. And when you and the problem is as well, when you they sold Thiago Silva, who's still Chelsea's best defender, um, because he said he wasn't good enough and yet he won the Champions League. <laughs> And and when you've got a player like Marquinhos, who is still one of the world's great great central central defenders, when he's having to basically hold the defense together the whole season, it's inevitable that he'll have an off night one night, like he did against Real Madrid, where he was horrendous. So when you're reliant on on that, and then you've got Kimpembe alongside him, who's just a, you know, he's got everything that should be should make a successful centre back, but an absolute rock for a brain at times. Um, it, every, there's just so many lo- dislikable things about PSG, and I want I like PSG PSG well, is, but it's the opposite to what Jeff says. FIFA is real life for them. Yeah, it is. It is a bit. Yeah. Um, and, and there's the a player is, on a free. We'll have him. But they. But the thing that the thing that is frustrating with PSG is they they could have gone, they could have gone the Arsenal way. They could have had all this money and actually said, you know what, we're going to invest it. We're going to bring in the young, talented players, and they could have been quite likable. Like if. Um, do you remember when Malaga had all that money and they brought in some quite likable players, didn't they? And, you know, and everyone was rooting for them in the Champions League. Yeah. Or Dortmund when they brought through. Like, if if these big clubs actually went, do you know what, we're going to... Like, if Newcastle, with all this money... Actually, no, that's a bad example because Saudis and... Yeah. But just say, I don't know, a club got bought out... A club like, a, I don't know, a Peterborough got bought out by a wealthy investor... And that investor came in at Wrexham. There's a good example. This, the guys who own that, I forget the names. Ryan Reynolds, is it? Yeah. If they're, they're doing it the right way, aren't they? Because they're bringing in players, local players. They're investing in the community, all that jazz. If they suddenly were successful, I don't think people would be against them. Mm. Whereas when you're a Man City or, or a, you know, a PSG, people just... Or a Salford go- City. Or say exactly. <laughs> you know, you, you get hated right. because not only have you got the money, but you you conduct yourselves with the attitude of we can have whoever yeah. we want, buy whoever we want. It's the arrogance, it. isn't it? Yeah. What, what's, the, Mac- what's the view of Macclesfield, Josh? You know a bit about what's... Because they've got, obviously, Robbie Savage involved, haven't they? And they're not exactly liked now, are they? No, but that's a... F- um, they're almost kind of phoenixing, aren't they, Macclesfield? Yeah. I think there's... It's difficult because there's a lot of teams out there now, and Wrexham is one of them, where... And the other one is Dulwich Hamlet. I know it might upset mm. a few people if I mention this in there, but they are bringing certain um, faces into the club in order to sell a documentary to boost commercial revenue. Yeah, that's true. So Robbie Savage comes straight into the Macclesfield board. Yeah, he's local and that kind of stuff, but that club has now got an infinitely greater reach than anyone else in that league. Wrexham, yeah. again, who else is talking about anyone else in that level of football? Yeah. Uh, on that scale as well. I don't think anybody outside of probably England would know any other team in that league or how, even knew who Wrexham were before. And now so how, that you can... how do you become uh, a like, don't like, because we talk about the Cronkies mm. with us, you know, you talk about the Saudi investment in Newcastle, like what constitutes an owner that people would be happy with? It doesn't so, have to be a wealthy business owner from it has to be well. Oh, they hate their owners. No, so, when they start, when they're in oh. league, when they're in League One, the yeah. way they were doing, the way Brighton the, did it, kind of. Yeah, Brighton. In terms of that was going to be the club I'd use. It is an owner who has is local, a fan of the club, has been seen in the terraces when they were shit, basically, mm. and then is spending money that in the fans' head is them not just getting rid of excess money, but feeling that money come out of their account. But like Tony Bloom doesn't, you know, he's a businessman. He didn't earn it through a commodity, mm. um, should we say, or didn't earn it through royalty. 
um, more of he was a professional gambler mm. and then moved into entrepreneurship and has built his empire that way. So I think they see it more as that. And then it is the case of not taking the piss with the fans, making it seem affordable to be there. You're always going to have people that don't like the job that a owner is going to do. It just depends on how loud they're shouting and who's giving them the platform. I think if you find one person that doesn't like Arsenal, they'll have do them you, on the they'll f- front page of talk sport, aren't they? Do you also need to be um, like if if you're the guy that comes in and saves a club from a shitty owner, you're automatically mm. like like the example oh. I would give in my knowledge now is Bordeaux. So anyone who mm. knows you know the name Bordeaux, they might they might just think wine. But well, Bordeaux the, are, the sponsors mm. tweeting laughing at them. Exactly, and and Bordeaux are a, a mass. Like they're a massive club in in French football history. They're up there with with the Saint Etiens and the Marseilles. And I don't include PSG because of their their lack of like you know historic. They're a modern club, but well, Bordeaux they founded of, in nineteen seventy PSG. Exactly. Whereas Bordeaux go all the way back. So you know when Marseille were winning European Cups, Bordeaux were challenging. They are a massive name, and they're bottom of Ligue 1 this season, and and they are. The, the, the more defeats they have, they are looking more and more likely they could be in lead up. This is this is on parallel with a team like, um, well, I would argue like an Everton getting relegated. Oh, that's the worst one I was going to say, Everton. Yeah, it, it, it is on Titans parallel with a, a big club who, you know, and a, okay, they're not a, ch- a title challenger, but a club with a history, with a background, with support base going down to the second division. And Didn't it's we all get Shamak from Bordeaux after they won the title? Yeah, we did, yeah. Exactly. So, that wasn't that long ago. But if, but if, um, if you, if you're the guy that comes in and buys Bordeaux now because they're an absolute mess and they're a shit show and their owners are fighting with the fans and all sorts, if you're that guy, as long as you haven't got a questionable human rights background, if you're just a wealthy investor from Portsmouth or whatever, hmm. um, it doesn't really matter what you say or do because you're the good guy aren't you yeah you know if you I mean? return them if you take bordeaux and say you purchase them in the you know, middle of next season if they're middle table of uh league door and yeah. then invests not even smartly you don't even have to do smart investments you buy that league mm. to get them out and the next two seasons you're then you've returned them to your europa league side for example, you've won, and then you, if you then sell, they'll say that was great ownership. Mm-hmm. That's it, you get out on the high. It's so long as you don't go full Icarus and say, <laughs> oh, I'm going to stay there and outstay your welcome. But and, is that, yeah. but is that the fine line that clubs sail where they, you know, they have a little bit of success, like mm. you know, like we use Robbie Savage? So if Macclesfield now mm. get back to back promotions and ends up in the championship, mm. Plymouth Argyle had it briefly under Holloway, you know, they were they were on the cusp of the playoffs and Holloway got. Mm. Um, you know, some people like him, some people don't. He, you know, he's mm. he's actually quite a nice bloke, to be fair. But he he got them on the cusp of the playoffs of the championship, and people down here were thinking that Argyle could be Premier League, mm. and then they went all the way down to to D two again because they they lost managers and fell away, and and Holloway mm. went to was it Leicester at the time? I think he left Argyle for it was a club that were on parallel with with Argyle, but mm. a bit higher up on the table, and Argyle fell away because they got ideas above their station. And that's, I suppose you could say, say about Derby or Sunderland or... It never works, does it? Look at Portsmouth, Palmer back in the day. Yeah. They ended up yeah, bankrupt. Yeah, exactly. Malaga, yeah. Granada, yeah. Udinese, the big, they've all tried it. Some of the big clubs that are, are, are wallowing never in works. Yeah. You've got to go long term. Mm. I mean, look at Peterborough. Darrow McAnthony bought those when I think they were in League Two, fourth tier of English football. Mm. And it's taken years, it's taken years. It always gets young players in, decent strikers, maybe one out of uh, two out of four will, will do good at getting from non league, sell them on for a few million. And every now and then we get two or three years in the championship and straight back down again. And Peterborough fans are happy with that. Well, even but Germany, you mentioned earlier, Hamburg, they're still in, in the Bundesliga as well, aren't they? They're mm. in the second tier. They were a massive club in the eighties, like Hamburg. Kevin Keegan played for Hamburg, didn't he? Yeah. I and mean, they were a huge club in the eighties. And now, uh, and and that was all because Hamburg thought they were too good to go down. West Ham, mm. let's not forget, were were relegated with that. Remember that team, that West Ham mm-hmm. team, was too good to go down. One that I think there was worked. a Newcastle as well, too good to yeah, go yeah. down. Man City, even, <laughs> you know, before the money, Man City and Paul Dick off at Wembley, even Nicky Weaver in goal saving penalties. They mm. were literally a nobody club back then. A racing ball, um, 
what's it? RB Leipzig, Rassenball, isn't it? Rassenball. They've Rassenball. done it. They bought that team in the third tier and then went up and they stayed up and they're still in the top four mm. in, in Bundesliga, Offenheim. the top five. Offenheim mm. are known as the Plastic Club of Germany. They were mm. they were literally no one and they got bought by a wealthy businessman. And yeah, but I, I, I don't know. I, 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 the, the modern era, you, you aren't going to get another Jack Walker, are you? A Blackburn, mm. you know, a local businessman who buys a club because a, a football club, I don't know enough about business. This is one for Andrew, but. A football club is not a good investment, is it? It's not a sound business strategy. No, unless you're going to take them from very small and risk taking them, build them up, or Mm. you get lucky, you get in early on a huge Phoenix club. Mm. Um, Should we mention Rangers as uh, that? Mm. Look at the people that bought the initial stakes in Rangers when they came back. And have now yeah, you sold forget them. they got relegated, didn't they? Yeah, you forget that. They had to yeah, start again. Five years. Yeah, start yeah. fresh. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And one of the people that jumped on the table early and bought, I think, 25%, Mike Ashley. Yeah, exactly. 25% of that. Yeah. Uh, and then, because it was it was worthless at that point, but the only thing they owned was the stadium. But it was a sound investment because you always knew that they would very quickly you come all the way back up. You knew they'd go all the way back up and you would probably the then try and sell as soon as they won the first premiership. Do you know what? I'm I'm actually surprised no one's ever invested in an, in an Irish club because you think of the market it's there. Not, the people no, don't, it's, it's not the number it's, one sport there, is it though? Hmm. No. The only way that you, would work is if you if you manage to persuade the the English Football League to allow Irish teams in, like you allow Welsh teams in, and hmm. a Scottish team because Berwick Rangers are in. Well, the board keeps changing, and Berwick Rangers over the years are in and out. The only way to do that, and I'd like it. Imagine having a, a team from Dublin. Yeah. Or a team from Cork, or, or any of those teams. But then, if but you could get European success with an Irish team if you just mm. won your league every year. But you you could go far in the Europa League if you had a good squad. Like Sligo went far far a while ago, didn't they? Who did we play? We played uh, Dundalk. Both. Dundalk, that's it. Yeah, we had Dundalk in Europa. Yeah, but you look at someone like Cork City. That's um, Craig from the uh, the same old Arsenal. That's his local side. They won the double. The next season, they got relegated. And then we had one of our bo- one of our blokes on loan there because they had half a season, got relegated, and then they got promoted back up again. Mm-hmm. So there's just so few people. There's no money in football in, in Ireland. I mean, you look at the national team. They really they have anybody. Any it's, got, it's gone back to like the Jack Charlton days. Almost anybody can go and play for them if you've got any kind of Irish heritage or in Tony Casarino's heritage, no heritage at no, all. We still managed to. <laughs> <laughs> but the not, yeah. it's not the big enough sport. Rugby, I think, is their sport over there. I mean, they've got hurling and mm. and all those other ones like that. But uh, there is no team. I mean, look at Everton. Mm. Half a billion pound, Mashiri and the other one have put into that. And now look where they are. Are they going to go, do you think? Go down? No. Yeah. Because the longer uh, this goes, the more I wonder. Put it this way. It depends if they can afford to sack Lampard. <laughs> if they keep Lampard, they're going straight down. Absolutely. No is, there not three first game. is there not three clubs worse? Because Norwich have gone, aren't they? Let's be honest. Mm, uh, Norwich, would you say are there three clubs worse? There are not three managers worse. No. And but I they, think there's... they've got talent in that squad, though, haven't they? Like they haven't got, got a striker players. if Calvert Lewin keeps getting injured. Yeah. I don't know. That's I... the big issue. I mean, Everton not... at the moment are three points clear of Watford, but Watford, but they've played two games less than mm-hmm. Watford. And who's, ma- who's managing Watford now? I forget. Who... Uh, oh, boy. Crystal Palace. Like, oh, boy. Of course, yes, boy, yeah, yeah, boy yeah, Hudson. Boy. Yes. Burnley, <laughs> Burnley might down. pull it off. Now they've bought that old that bloke from Wolfsburg in the Oops, January window. Was. Yeah, mm-hmm. but then but it's, it's, we're overdue Burnley fucking off, aren't we? Oh, that's yeah. a, that's um, a horrible yeah, shit. It'll, it'll, it'll be Burnley, Burnley will stay up. And it will be at the expense of Everton, I'm expecting. I'd love Everton to go down. Not, I mean, I like Everton. I don't want Everton or Leeds to go down. But uh, Are Everton, has to along be with Arsenal, the only club to never be relegated from the top flight still? Well, we have been. We got uh, relegated so in 1909, have, I think. So have uh, Everton. Okay. Everton have been relegated as well. Or is it post-war or something like that? I just something remember a like stat that. when I was yeah, growing up. I think something. Everton's is the longest unbroken run of top flight football, but we've got the most seasons. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, consistent. so when they uh, go down, yeah. we'll get the record of the most seasons and the longest unbeaten, un unbroken run. But yeah, so we got relegated. If they were, <laughs> they would they would claim a trophy for that. There'd be Burnley a bus is, parade any day. Burnley is one of those shitty clubs you just I just want rid of. I I genuinely I could not tell you. Actually, I could tell you that's a lie. I think Fulham. <laughs> 
was just going to say, I couldn't tell you who's top of the championship. I think Fulham are up there. Oh, yeah. I don't know who else is up there. Uh, it is Fulham and then... Um, it is someone Huddersfield are rising. No, Huddersfield aren't. They're not top of Forrester, it. Uh, Bournemouth. Bournemouth, of course. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, they got I, that. Dominic I, Solanke suddenly started scoring goals after a huge level. move from Liverpool. Was it at this level? Because uh, I, I would take I would take Bournemouth back because it's a nice day trip down there. Um, I'd quite happily have Fulham back because Craven Cottage, London. You know, nice club. Um, QPR back would be fun. I like QPR. Well, at the moment, if you want to go through who are available in the playoffs, you've got on 61 points, you're going to go from sixth up because there's a punchline in third. Um, Blackburn are there. Yeah. Then it's Sheffield United. No. Huddersfield, who are on an extraordinary run at the moment. They're unbeaten in like 700 years, are they? That's 17 assume. games, I think, they're unbeaten Jesus. in. Well, same thing, uh, same years, so. Oh, no, it can't be because I've just looked at their form table and they've lost two games in a row, so it can't be that. They, they were but, on a good um, run. They, they were on a very yeah. good run. And then third, it's nice to see some boyhood teams of Arsenal fans coming up. You know, like Fuck the Luton. toast of yeah, AFTV. Oh, they're going to have some split ah. allegiances next year. Luton are third at the moment. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Luton are flying, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. Luton and fuck Danny where, Williams. Where are QPR? Wilson. Are they just on the outside of the playoffs now? Though, uh, I I think they're they're just outside right. West London. Um, no, they're eighth. <laughs> oh, they're eighth. eighth. Uh, oh, they're up, same, yeah. same points as Middlesbrough. Um, game in hand on Blackburn. Uh, who are two points ahead of them, but uh, Middlesbrough have also got a game in hand and on the same points as QPR. Fulham and Bournemouth are clear, aren't they, at the top? Uh, yeah, there's six points clear of Luton. So those two and they've back. both got games in hand on mm. Luton as well. So, yeah, they're probably going to be the ones that go up. Because um, I always imagine. like to see a new team, you know, someone new mm. each year. But... Yeah, I like to see the money shared around because those parachute it's... payments can save a club. Yeah. Once they and if, down we, again. if we could kick, because I always look at this as, you know, as an Arsenal fan, I'm like, who would I like Arsenal to play? If we can get rid of those any of those shitty Northern clubs, so get rid of Burnley, get rid of Norwich, um, <laughs> get rid of Spurs, oh, no, wait. Um, get, that those two can go. And replace them with a Fulham just down the road from us. Replace Forest. Them with a, a, yeah, for, Forest yeah. is the team, I think. It's the next one. They've yeah. got they got a problem, I think. Mm. They'll, it'll be one of those. Everyone will be confused who don't follow the championship. If they mm. say, oh, they made the playoffs last season, then get confused when they're 20th next season. And it's because they've they've basically gone all in. On but would Luton be, if, say if Luton came up, though, they, would mm. they be like a, a Holloway's Blackpool? Like oh yeah, they've got they've got the twenty third or twenty fourth smallest budget in the championship. Yeah, so that would be kind yeah. of fun, and they'd be fodder for us to roll through. Oh, I can... only hope the fake out was smashing ten nil home and away. Yeah, but remember how that started with Brentford this season? So, I mean, the <laughs> oh, yeah. COVID allowing, of course, but yeah. Yeah, they got um, Nathan Jones at the helm, who's a decent manager. He went to Stoke, didn't he? And it didn't work out. He went to Stoke, didn't work. He did a bit of a. Um, did a bit of an Eddie Howe, I think is what they call it in the trade. Rebranded himself. Went, went to Luton. No, there. was at Luton. Oh, wait, sorry. Was at a club where he started his career. Went up north a bit. Didn't like it. Came back came south. Back. Did all right again. Yeah, yeah. The same club. Same as Darren Ferguson. Mm-hmm. Left Peterborough, got to Preston, yeah. then come back again. Mm-hmm. Um, right. Got a question here from Stan, if we've, we've finished with that. Mm-hmm. Yes. Says, uh, what's your thoughts on the, the rule change, you get no points for a nil-nil draw. I've not heard anything about uh, that. It's on a rule change, if you could read, Danny. I think he's posing as right. a question. Yeah. Yeah. I, no. I, wouldn't be, I wouldn't be for that. I mean, no. There's I, something I get... beautiful, about, uh, beautiful about a nil-nil draw, isn't it? Is, was it in Maldin he said it's the perfect game of football because it means perfect, no one's yeah. made a mistake? Yeah, uh-huh. true. <laughs> I get where he's coming from because you want mm. to encourage goals, but I, mm. uh, I don't know. No. I, have we got yeah. time to talk about what Chris changing his mind? I mean, we're one hour twenty-three. Oh yeah, we probably should because Chris said we should only be an hour and a half. So let's give him six minutes <laughs> <laughs> to explain three, <laughs> explain himself for three years. Because <laughs> we we read out your tweets on the show, Chris, and Dude, I for I, one I, said it, it's I very good it. that Sorry. you can change your you can you've, you've decided to change your mind for logical reasons, and then you broke it down into individual segments. I don't think anybody disagreed with you, and uh, I know what how it is. <laughs> well, oh, I'm sure there were. I'm sure there were a lot of people saying, "Told you so." Yeah, you're a fool. Yeah, I, I felt I was the same with Wenger back in the day. There's, but there was nothing Wenger ever do 
after about 2007 when I thought I want him to stay at the club, I want him gone. No, there's nothing. It was, mm. We were just headed in a spiral downwards. Yeah. So what was your... What I, was your was, was there a key moment you went, oh, yeah? Um, yeah, not really. Like, I think I think the only thing that... The, I think the thing that really captured it for me was was this togetherness that he has moulded. And more importantly, we're fun again. That... And that was my biggest gripe with him previously. It was that, you know, he, he was a great politician. You know, he would wear the right things, have lovely hair, say the right sound bites. Brilliant politician, although, you know, politicians in this country can't even brush their hair. But that's beside the point. Um, he just came across as a guy who, who was very media savvy, very pep. And you know my thoughts on that, bold fraud. So I just felt that he just needed to be a bit more human, a bit more. We, we know he loves Arsenal. Um, I don't think we ever doubted that. He's captain of the club. He, you know, he's a he's a very likable character, Mikel. But that was the Mikel I wanted. I didn't want the to borrow a Tuesday clubism. I didn't want the El Caldeo. I didn't want this this dictator, this ruler, this this micromanaging, you know, freak who would stay up till 3 a.m. watching videos and then you know, ring Pep for his opinion. I, I wanted him to be Mikel and I just wanted him to, as again, to use the old phrase, take the handbrake off. Like, just let these players play. Give them their their, their opportunities. And they're, as I said to you before we started recording, that there's still things I think he needs to learn. I still think he can be a bit spiky when he doesn't need to be. I still think he needs to be a little bit less. This touchline um, sort of performance, like sometimes is a bit much for me. I do think he needs to to maybe learn a bit from that, a bit more Vieira in him rather than than you know Klopp and Warnock and jumping around. But I don't think he's. Um, I think he's. I think he's quite a humble man, and I respect that. And like I said in my tweet at the time, um, that the great thing about being, I can't remember the exact words he used, but something along as a bit you know being a a fairly well a fairly well educated and intelligent human being is you can hold your hands up sometimes and say actually i might have got this wrong you don't have to to scream at a manager down the camera lens of some nonce outside the emirates to allegedly to um to to be that you don't have to be that you don't have to sit in your datsun and scream into the dashboard you can just be a like-minded human being and just say yeah i i might have got it wrong the, the caveat would be the, the process is still ongoing and I'll, I'll never I'll never forgive him for the process because I just can't but he, he's he's getting a lot he's getting more right now than he was getting getting right previously he's making good tactical decisions the substitutions still need a bit of work some of the the setups still need a bit of work and we still need to prove that we can actually go and win something consistently but I genuinely think if he gets this group of players into the top floor top four without a striker, let's be honest, Alba's not really been with us since that contract. It, it's up there with one of the, the greatest managerial achievements ever for us, I think. It, it's it's right up there with Arsene getting that team of the famous picture of like um, you know, Seagan and Andre Santos and that horrible team he took into Europe and got us the, the, the um, Champions League last stages. It's right up there. like And like I say, Mikel deserves a lot of credit for that. And I'm I, I did call him the Spanish Steve Keane because um, that's where I think he was heading. But he's come out the other side. And and I think we referenced it earlier on. I think that documentary, although I'm still I'm still a bit toe curling, I'm still worried about what that's going to show. Um, I think we're going to see the development of Mikel as a bloke and, and Mikel as a manager. I think they're going to focus quite heavily on his development and where he's come from. Um, and and you can see that he loves that job, and he bleeds Arsenal, and you can't fault that. Fair play to the guy, you cannot fault that. So, yeah, sorry to go on, but I just think sometimes you need to be a bit humble, hold your hands up, and say, yeah, actually, people deserve some credit. Um, and if he doesn't win the Champions League next year, he's a fucking fraud. So, <laughs> <laughs> so do you think that what is there something in the future that Ellis is having a turn here? Um, is there anything that you can see making you angry again? Because I get really annoyed at the fact that he has his best 12 players and then they yeah. play all the time. And the rest of them very rarely even get a game as a sub 
if they do it's five or ten minutes when they need to come on with 20 minutes 30 minutes to go when, mm. when the game is won so that if we need him in the next game they're match fit because he just mm. and we found that out so many times this season whether it's Tavares or Laconga or even um uh, who was the other one Pepe just come on yeah. they're not ready because they're not match fit but but also is that an element of the squad size? Because if, if we if we do get into the Champions League, I would argue even if we get into the Europa League, we we we've got a very small squad this year because we're only playing you know once a week. If we had no European football, we could get away with it. We can't take the squad we've got now into Europe next year. We 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 would have to bring in four or five players to bolster that. Another squad. summer like we just had, and I think we will. And, and and not just players that are going to go straight into the first team because you got to think this summer you're probably going to lose realistically you probably will lose Lacazette you will lose Nketiah people have forgot Mohamed Onene is coming out of contract I know he's not playing but he's still a squat he still holds a shirt mm. Maitland Niles could be gone permanently um, we may maybe we'll save Saliba chat for another night but his future is uncertain um, you know they're. Leno will, will probably go, so you need to look at a goalkeeper, although the lad from America is coming in, isn't he? Yeah. But there's a lot of players who are still going to go. Hector Bellerin, what happens with him? So we are going to have to flesh out. It's not just this summer, right, let's go and buy our striker that we're going to have for the next 10 years. We're also going to have to look at, like Josh said earlier, on a backup striker, a project striker maybe, if you will. Mm-hmm. We need another midfielder. I still think, as much as I praise Miguel Arteta, <laughs> We have to move on from Granite Shaka. I'm sorry, we just do. Um, there's a lot of work to do. Pepe could well be moved on in the summer. It, it, it's just not worth Is there any rumours about him going anywhere? Back to France? Because um, he can't really do it here, can he? The trouble is, nobody, nobody in France can afford his wages. He's not going to go to PSG. Um, Lille couldn't have him back. He could go to Nice, potentially, because they've got a bit of money behind them. But Isn't he's more Ineos like... Bloke? He he'd be more likely to end up in like a Villarreal, like or a Sevilla. I could see somewhere. him in a Spain somewhere yeah, where he's Spain. given a bit of freedom. Yeah, he's not going to get kicked up into the stands every exactly. other go, and they'll allow him to be. To be fair, yeah. Italy would allow that or as Italy. well. Yeah, yeah, he'd do all right in Italy. I think. I I think it, it's coming to the point where it might be best for all parties if he had another opportunity elsewhere because we've never used him right, and that's one again one thing I still think. Mikel probably got wrong with him, but yeah, I I, I think we, mm. I think that squad will have to change to answer your question, Danny. I don't think we can afford to have a short, a small squad. Um, we just can't. Like we're going to have to flesh out those those that team, and if we don't, we're we're going to come up really short. And that's where Arteta's man management is going to have to be bang on, because he hasn't really had to deal with leaving out players this season, uh, other than mm. Tavares maybe for his, his disciplinary element, but he hasn't had to have players banging on his door saying, why am I not playing? Because he's been able to play them all. And cleared all the ones that were, who exactly. weren't good enough, who yeah. had no justification to be banging Christ, on the door. he even talked Eddie and Katia into staying. Like, yeah. what was the point in Eddie and Katia staying? I, I think there's a reason why staying, and I think that's because we can get more money for him in a compensation deal that we could that we were getting offered in January. That's probably so you're the only person who's ever said that. I know I tell everybody that you said it. It Thank makes you, Danny, sense. and no one listens. It does, it does make sense, yeah. Yeah. That's where we make the money. And then it will come out in the Amazon documentary, and James McNicholas will be there going, Oh, I fucking told <laughs> you so. <laughs> where? No one reads your shit. Is it in one of your stand ups that you mentioned it? I think I might have even got him blocked. I dislike him that much. Um, I quite like him, but that's right. No, nice. he's boring fucking. I don't know how he's got where he is in football. How, how anybody could go, oh, yeah, we've got those arse block people. Yeah, we're going to. It's like when uh, when AC Milan bought Luth of Lissit. That's what the Athletic have done by getting <laughs> McNicholas when they should have got well, Andrew. Aren't the Athletic a bit fraudulent anyway? I mean, overall. So they're, 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 they're done going bankrupt. Yeah, yeah. It was a gimmick at the time. It won't last. Mm. Well, did some American company just buy them recently? Maybe they won't go down. Yeah, probably, but... Probably. It's a bit New York sucks, Times, they're buying everybody. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I am imagining that there will be some plenty of suitors for Eddie and we'll get some decent money out of that one. But yeah. Pepe, we still got two more £15 million payments to make. One beginning of this season, one beginning of next season. We've already that's amortized that. Yeah, we've done yeah, that. Yeah, we'll, we'll cut that off anyway. we probably made bigger losses on other players we've got rid of in the past it's just and, we only and the look ar- so- the, the argument is if you if, if you say say that we let Laka go or his contract ended when he, he went and then Katia yeah. went you could argue that Martinelli could start every week Saka yeah. 
should start every week. Smith Rowe, um, you could convert him into a more of a, well, not convert him, I guess, play him as a 10 and drop Erdegaard deeper. Or you mm. can have those two rotating. Um, or you could say, right, Martinelli is going to be our project striker. But for me, or, where Martinelli is in his career, mm. well, he needs to be playing every week now. He needs to be seen in for Brazil. See yeah, exactly. Brazil. Oh, black so and cheeky you, monkey. If you look to start those <laughs> three slash four, you you and then you've got a fit party, and then you know if you move Shaka on, I would I would like to see us experiment with with an Erdegaard deeper with party, but it doesn't give you much defense. I'd uh, I'd like the other one, which is Smith Rowe as striker. As a, mm, I don't know, is is he got the? He's been called out for it, as at least. Um, Arteta saw there was something you could bring in there because he's got the stature for it. He comes on and scores find... goals. Yeah, he's yeah, a you... physical player, yeah. yeah if you just... couldn't find someone else who's six foot one and could if, deal if... with the rim... rigmaroles of uh, that. I don't he know had... if he's got the ability in the air. No, and if he had the, the Michael Owen pace, because he's got a similar body type to Owen, hasn't he, when he broke through? He's mm. like quite a... I know he's a bit taller, but he's got that... He's, he's, fill... he's filled out a bit, but he's still nimble. Yeah. Mm. And I feel like if you... Yeah, you, you could, but I think he would need pace, and he's not the quickest, is he? Quick feet, but not quick. Yeah, I think that's the thing that I don't think you necessarily need speed if mm. everybody else around you is slow. Like Lacka. if that's regard, yes. If everybody, yeah, Lacka's the only problem is Lacka's in a great position, but then he <laughs> needs that box to boxness to keep up with play. Yeah, he's great. At, he can get come short quickly, but then can't go long at the same speed that he comes short to speak. True. Like yeah. we saw from that wow. quick free kick, where he, he was just like in a different time zone. Mm. Yeah, I think there's uh, plenty of availability that we can get for strikers. I don't necessarily see what we could get, but Chris, I kind of agree with you that I think we've got enough options in that front four. That we'll, we'll need to bring someone else in. It's obviously why we've been linked with the guy from PSV. Uh, we'll probably be linked with some others as well. Definitely need to bring in a couple of strikers. I don't think we could get away with trying to force one of those four further up. And I don't think Odegaard works deeper. But what we've done with Xhaka is interesting. At least, I know you say we've got to move away from him. I think it's a lot easier to move away from Granite Xhaka now with the role we've got him doing. Mm. We don't have to try and find, you know, that deep lying playmaker that's left footed, can, of the, that does all the good things that Xhaka does. Mm. Where he's now playing in this four three three, I can think of at least ten, fifteen players in the Premier League that could play that position and do a similar job to Xhaka's doing right now. Even someone like John McGinn, you'd play him there, you'd be all right. Is, or would you go somewhere like a? Uh, I, I don't know if he signed for somebody already, but Frank Kessie, uh, he's on a Barcelona free, this he's week. Gone to Barca, yeah. Because mm. because to me, like Kessie is almost like a good version of Alex Song mm. in that he's a big physical player and can tackle, but he's got that creative element. Mm. But then, would you argue that Partey's that anyway? I, I, don't I think know. Partey's kind of there. Sambi says he wants to play where Partey's playing right now, so that kind of sorts itself out. Remember Sambi? Yeah, he was a thing, yeah. wasn't he? Right? He existed to be like, where's he been? Like, I haven't heard he for a month. He, he played for Belgium this week. Oh, okay, he's still there. Then. Yeah, I mean, maybe they're looking at him as mm. I, I just think that everyone is so focused on this striker this summer. I think we're all mm. we're all living in a little bit of a fairy tale land that we there's we two big we... we need to get, isn't there? Really, it's a striker yeah. and a first choice midfielder. And yeah. depending on what competition we're in, depends on what midfielder we can get. And arguably I mean, another right back as well, maybe? Or would you keep Cedric and just have him as backup, I suppose, for the job on the Yeah, I think it depends on what you do with Saliba. Not that he can play right back, but ben, yeah, he, White he can. Can, ben White can shuffle out there as well. Yeah, You've I, got I options. think I'd be, I'd be more inclined to go to a back three and play Saliba in a back three than a right back. Mm. But he can mm. do the right back role, but... yeah. Yeah, I, I if you play your back three, you've got to have attacking wing backs mm. to any one side and, and then you don't yeah. need just your Sackers and your and your Martinelli's which Avon's throwing do. a good one up on the youth team ones, uh, Norton Cuffey. We've seen he's got a um Is he a politician? I've never heard of him. <laughs> he's not. Uh he got played an assist for, for the under twenty ones, didn't he? There you go, yeah, played for the under uh, England under twenty ones in each of the week. Brooke Norton um, Cuffey. That is the most yes. middle class name I, I've ever heard. I would imagine though 
uh, with the good work that Per's doing is that he goes to the championship for a, a season on loan. Yeah. Uh, it seems like what we're trying to do is make sure that, you know, we've got a lot of young players in our squad, but they're not young in terms of their career. They've what all about... had at least a hundred and something appearances between them before the kind of break did, of the first teams. Did Saka ever go on loan? I'm trying to think. No, of that. he's the only one of, that hasn't been on loan. Because Smith Rowe went to Huddersfield. Because mm -hmm. and RB what Leipzig. I've seen, and Leipzig, of course, what I've seen of him, which I, I will grant, is not as much as I mm -hmm. would have liked to. Have. This Omari Hutchison looks the real deal to me. Like he mm -hmm. looks like a player who he, you know, not not as in starting in the Premier League every week, but if we mm. got into, like, say, the Europa, mm -hmm. like Saka, but uh, he, I think I could see him playing that. He mm. just looks, he's he's physically good, he's quick, he's direct, you know. And I, I would argue, if you're going to spend uh, Gakpo 40-odd million quid, why mm. not just say to a Murray Hutchison, we're going to give you, you know, you're not going to play every week, but you'll be part of the squad like you are now, and you're going to mm. get the Carling Cup games or whatever that you're going to get, some of the European mm. games... Um, and and you're gonna get home to Burnley when we're at the end of the season. It doesn't matter. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, yeah. I would rather keep that money for players we actually need to update our upgrade our first team on than spend it on mm. a player who maybe is only gonna get 15, 20 games max. Like, what yeah. do we pay? For I Sambi? wouldn't. Sambi, we think we play sixteen million. That, that's it. Yeah, so that's what I would spend on a player mm. like Sambi, who's in the background, not forty yeah. million. On a player because because we yeah. need to learn from Pepe, don't we? Mm. Yeah, and I think player, the one with yeah, when you're going big for a player like that, you'd say, would you pay that to have someone to be just back up for Martinelli? Because that's what exactly. we're fundamentally asking is we're asking who's backing up Martinelli. Yeah, would you rather go experience in you know well, Villian was our experience initially, which I don't think we're <laughs> going to go down that road again. No. But I think it's all about with our players are young players is we're taking them on pre-season and we can see what they can do and patino yeah. is the other one he's not me, physically he, good enough though is he yet yeah. he's I talented think, yeah. but he's talented nothing. and you make sure you get his loan right and i think yeah. that's again where we look at the work that Per's done with the loans and it's all about picking the right loans for them and so long as they don't get big-headed and decide that they don't want to be at their loan club anymore because they're not getting the loans they're not getting the games they want but yeah. they're getting an education. Um, and don't and don't forget, value doesn't constitute a player. We talked about Hazard earlier yeah. on. Like the fee doesn't yeah. dictate how good the player is. We got no. Tommy Asu, who I still think is a better centre back, but he's proven he's a very good right back. He was what fifteen million from Bologna. Yeah. He was nothing, was he? And look how good a signing he's been. So the bargains are out there if. Mm. Arteta and Per have got the right scouting system in place, which, mm -hmm. to be fair to them both, there hasn't been many duds, mm. has there? Willian was the the real, the real exclamation point. David mm. Luiz, you could argue, was a bit, eh? but I think he helped a lot of us in the say. I think centre backs that played under him certainly helped. I don't know if Gabriel would have hit the ground running he was and would settled as well. Room. Yeah, he was good in the dressing room. That's what you wanted. Mm. Um, I just think that if you, but I don't think we need it anymore. We've got that experience. And I think if you if you bring in as well, if you go to a name that's just crossed my mind as well, if you went to say Monaco and you said, right, we want Aurelio and who mm. you know Chelsea were basically wrapping up, and now they can't even afford their breakfast. <laughs> but you'd have to pay fifty, sixty million for a player like mm. him. But he's good enough at his age to walk into a midfield. But mm. you can't sign a player like that who's on the up in the European market and then say, yeah, you're going to be behind Granite Shaka for about you know, 18 <laughs> months because he's going to go, no, thanks. I'll go and run Chelsea's midfield. Thank you. See you later. Mm. So you've either got to, you've either got to go a little bit, not Lidl, not Aldi, but you know, Tesco value rather than Waitrose, but you've got to go middle range and spend 25 mil and get another Sambi who you can develop or you've got to go high end. You can't just go for, mm a name just because it's a name. I think we'll be all right with um, what we're going to try and get with Xhaka. Because, as I say, the position's changed that we use him in. There's players in there that we can easily get that mm. would replace what Xhaka now does. Um, the player I'd go after, 
rather selfishly and rather irritatingly is Alexis McAllister. I think he's perfect for that position of what we now get Xhaka to do for for us. Mm. He's the player that would come in, good experience, a lot of minutes for his age. Again, mm. it's talking about having these players who they'll probably burn out by the time they're 30. But either we've got our money's worth by the time they're 30 or we've sold them for a huge profit and they're burning out in, yeah, and some other schmuck is going through our bins or some mm. other team's bins finding these players that are burnt out. And he reminds me a bit of Conor Gallagher at, at Chelsea, mm. isn't it? Gallagher's Palace another Lund. one. We can't get him, but yeah. And then you, you could also, you could also, again, going back to the French market, you could just go to Leon and say, you know, you want Laka, that's fine. We'll take mm. Maxence Kakare who's mm. basically Marco Verratti without the bookings. Mm. <laughs> he's not at that level, but that's the sort of player he is. He's diminutive, but he's a, you know, he's a, he's a defensive midfielder, but with a creative element. He's a number eight, but who can tackle. And that's kind of what party is. And is the game mm. moving on? Do you actually need a quote-unquote destroyer now? Mm-mm. You know, do you, you need, need a, someone a who can... Or... What we need... Declan Rice is not a destroyer, yeah. is he? No. You know what what I mean? you need is someone in midfield that can read the game. Yeah, and travel with the ball. Intercept. Yeah, they can intercept. That's what we've got the defenders for, is worst case, we've moved Xhaka away so he's not diving in and leaving us exposed. Partey is very clever about how he moves around the field and mm. intercepts rather than tackling, and if he needs to, puts in a tackle. And but yeah, Odegaard, yeah. Wow. Odegaard is just a hustler. That's what we he's, need. He's, he's, he's just a another joy, hustler. He's a joy of a footballer, isn't yeah. he? Like he's... What about Calvin Phillips? I mean, would you give that a smash? I don't I think mean, he's the whole Leeds, season he? injured, though. Not I think I, I think he does leave Leeds, but I think he's Alan mm. Smith. He goes to Man United. Oof. That's uh, and I know that will upset a lot of Leeds fans, but fuck them because mm. it's Leeds and they fans of assholes. But um, yeah, I, I would. Uh, I he, he, you could see Arteta working with a Calvin Phillips, couldn't you? Oh, it'll be sure. it'll be a hell of a fit. Like it's very Ben White, isn't it? It's very, He'd like, just say to him, basically, you've been knocking on the door of the the England team, how about cementing your place? Exactly. That's basically the words he says to him. I, I would love I would love Calvin Phillips in an Arsenal fan, um, I'm not going to lie. He's, but you yeah. were on Leon as well, Chris, and I think it might be worth rolling back to Mark Redman because you met, mes- uh, mentioned Kakare, but he mm. asked not only about Gu- Bruno Gumaresh, who Gumaresh. is now Newcastle's record styling and has only just started playing for them, um, but Lucas Paqueta, mm. attacking midfielder. Yeah, not for me. Not because he's not good enough. He, he's very. He's been brilliant for Leon. Uh, in fact, without him, Leon would be even lower than the lowly. T- I think it's tenth or in the league at the moment. But he's been brilliant in Europe. He's um, he was picked out of AC Milan's bins. Really, it just didn't work out at Milan. He was good in Brazil. Yeah, he's he's fantastic. Strong. Uh, he's a he's a big frame. Moves. Uh, his goal celebrations are questionable, but that's for different. Um, but did we don't I, need him. Did it's... I imagine him playing for Newcastle on loan? You did. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm have He's, to think uh... who it was that played for Newcastle on loan that from Inter. Uh, oh Christ! <laughs> they had no, someone. Man. Yeah, they have had a few. They, they had a Brazilian in the last couple of seasons. They had somebody. Mirandina, not in. <laughs> that's not who I'm thinking of. Um, but yeah, I, I, yeah, Paquette is very, very good. He, he is, but he's not the player we need. He, if you didn't have Smith Rowe, then you would say, yeah, he's a good fit. Um, if you were looking to buy a number ten who can, who can drift wide as well and can link the play, it's kind of like we were in the hunt for for our while. It, it just, it's a signing now that we just don't need. Like, um, but yeah, he's very good, and he probably won't stay at Leon. He will probably. If I had to put money on it, I think he'd probably end up in, in Germany. Uh, I, could, I could see a Paqueta at a Dortmund or a, uh, probably not a Bayern Munich, but just that step below Bayern. In fact, down the Nkunku route at RB Leipzig, someone like that with a bit of money. Uh, but for us, I, I, if, if I was going to go to Leon, then yeah, Kakare would be the one I would have a little snuff around. But but I also think he's, a, he's again, prime for someone like Bayern Munich because... He just ticks all the boxes of the sort of players they like. Um, yeah, I, I, I like the Paqueta, but not. it would be a waste of Arsenal for me. Sorry, Phil. Oh, no, it was, it was Mark. Mark. It's Mark. Mark sorry. I'm going to ask Phil Macker's question as well, whilst they're here. So we're going to paper talk about us. Uh, it was linked that Tiche would go to uh, Arsenal. And honestly, when I first read that and he said, no, I've not, not spoken to Arsenal, 
I thought, oh, I bet it's some journalist that has, he's been linked to the Argentinian one. And they've just gone, oh, TJ has gone Arsenal FC in the England. And <laughs> I think there's more chance of him going to the Argentinian one. So, yeah. He's uh, a manager of oh, Mike Corinthians. By the, the way, Mark. Mark is actually a, a Geordie. Uh, he's, he's actually a Newcastle fan. Why, are you, man? Um, yeah. So, uh, firstly, Mark, thank you for tuning into our Arsenal themed mm-hmm. podcast. I'm sure I recognise Mark's name. Was he always in the chat? I may be wrong. Mm-hmm. Anyway, he's uh, one who stalks me around Huntingdon. I've met him a couple of times. Uh, splendid. Knows but, knows there's more about Arsenal when he's a Newcastle fan than a lot of Arsenal fans I've spoken come, to. Come to the dark side, Mark. You're welcome. It's fine. Um, <laughs> Not yeah, anymore. He, He'd be a re actually saying that he'd be a really good fit at Newcastle because the Gumaresh Paqueta, uh, they're good friends, they linked really well at Leon. That and and if because Newcastle are not just going to be able to go out in the summer and just buy any old player just because they've got all this money, you've still mm-hmm. you you have to sell the dream of freezing cold Newcastle winters to high <laughs> high ranking Premier League players. You know, it's not going to be have easy. You, uh, <laughs> have you seen who they've just been linked with for their new left back? It's the oh, um, Scottish God. guy at Roma, Aaron. No, oh, Bologna oh, yeah. now. Aaron. Four uh, goals. He's it's nineteen. Shitty. He's got Not four shitty. goals this season from left I back in Serie A. And no one ever talks about him. It's Aaron Hinkley. Or Aaron Hickey. Aaron Hickey. The Aaron Hickey. Yeah. 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 Um, that's how yeah. you convince him. You go someone is like, hey, do you want somewhere that's still warm? But they, it's they, not as cold be, as Scotland. To be fair to Newcastle, though, and, uh, you know, taking aside their ownership, which mm. we all know is absolutely horrendous, mm. um, they have they have bought well, haven't they? Barring mm. Chris Wood, who's been a bit near. But, uh, Pica- Chris um, Wood was all about taking the legs out of somebody else, wasn't it? That's true, yeah. yeah. But tri- <laughs> they went full Man City like they did on us. Trippier mm. was a great sign, and he's been brilliant mm-hmm. for them until he got his injury. Um we know that we just discussed Gimaresh. Oh, I haven't mm-hmm. played much, but he will do well. Who was uh, uh, the big it's guy? Big right? Dan Burn. Signing of their season. That he's one. quite tall, you know. He is quite six, tall. Six for seven, Dan Burn, don't you know? They, they've um, done some pretty good but business. But he has absolutely transformed that Newcastle yeah. team and simultaneously fucked Brighton in the arse <laughs> at the <laughs> same time. Because... Brighton basically sold him because they went, oh yeah, uh, Lewis Dunk's back soon and so is uh, Adam Webster and then Adam Webster got injured and now we haven't got any centre-backs left. Um, if, if, it's just if, Dunk running a midfield with uh, running a defence with vibes behind him. That's it. If, if Newcastle stay up, which they probably mm. will now in their momentum's with them, if they if they mm. buy the right players, in fact we just talked about Calvin Phillips, he'd be a brilliant mm. fit for Newcastle. If they, got, if they get the right players, although mm. Eddie Howe is... I think I think it's fair to say you can't like you can't say Eddie Howe's proven yet. He's still got a lot to prove, mm-hmm. but he's clearly a talented coach. If you if with money and the right signings, i.e., they don't go out and do Man City in the early days and buy like Robinho and that. I, I like I could see someone like a Raheem Sterling going. Do you know what? I quite fancy uh, you know the idea of of this this project. If he's not in you know if he's not in City's team, I could see that. And if they spend the right money and if they do link up Paqueta and Kibarash and and they get you know Saint Maximin. Let's not forget he's still there. Mm-hmm. They they've got the basis to be you know not just survivor, but they could probably not challenge for the title, but they could be up there with you know t- top six West Ham type of season next season if they get it right. And that's excluding the the element of their ownership, of course. Quick question for Danny before we start wrapping up: yes. Do you go on mute when you go for a wee? Yes, <laughs> there's been a lot of noises in the background that I've been <laughs> hearing coming here that just sounded. Oh, I don't know me. what you were doing. Oh, no, it sounded I've like it. You back. Oh, I heard me. someone that's playing with something, twiddling with some plastics. Oh, that's sorry, that's me with my bottle. Sorry. Oh, yeah. I thought it was Danny trying to loosen Finally something did, off. I have for a week. Starts. If I need an emergency that. one. I get my wellies out. I said wellies. <laughs> yes. Right. Sorry. That was me uh, being unprofessional and not. No, it was, it was Chris. I was thinking it can't be Chris because he can't multitask. So no, I don't know. I, I can use Pornhub and let's move on. <laughs> yeah, uh, I've been doing some eToro as I've been doing the um, oh. the virtual you, one. You get some cream for that, Danny. Clears I've, it up. I've, and then... I've made money on nearly every trade I've done. Twenty quid here, thirty quid there, forty here. Twice I've done oil. Left it overnight. The first time I lost fifty quid. This time I lost two hundred and fifty-seven quid. <laughs> Yeah, don't, don't don't leave oil overnight. 
Don't go yeah. to uh, don't go to Danny's school of investments, guys. Well, the rest of them yeah. are doing really well. So that fucking oil, I thought them double down in on oil. They can sell it as well. You, Once you lose fifty percent, they just sell it for you. Can I ask oh. you an important question, Danny, as well? Yeah. Uh, will you be joining Magic Mike in watching uh, the the wonderful yearly event that is WrestleMania this weekend? Or two nights in? No, it? we. He is going. He's, he's off to see your lot in. He's off to uh, Ligue 1. So he's not doing it. We had planned to do something on the the Sunday um, the, the Sunday roast, but um, do, do they not have me. TV in France then? Can he? <laughs> well, Danny's got to be up early as well, hasn't he? Like he's oh, been yeah. moaning. Yeah, oh, true. Yeah, I've got to, I've got to be up at six a.m. on Monday. <laughs> well, I, I will of doing it the other way and staying up all night. I will be watching it, but I'm. I've got, I've got, I'm off work now till Tuesday, but I'm not going to watch it live. I'm going to probably watch it in delay. But I, uh, yeah, I still watch it. I'm not quite as a big a fan as as I used to be as a kid, but I'll, I'll still have a little look. So for the ner- the inner nerds in us out there, that'll be done. Wow. Hmm. I think, That's... I think, considering we had no script, I think we've done well tonight. I think we so. didn't get on to the Christianity bit, did we? No, sorry, we need to queue oh, up for I, that. I can give him as, as my shout out if you like. Yeah, well, you did speak about Bodo and you never brought him up as well. Since oh, that, that was, this week. That was the transition and I missed that my, was missed the tra- my you missed your own yeah. transition because you brought up Bodo. Well, well, we'll do it now as we wrap up then. Yeah, um, well, I've got a list here of all the Premier League centre backs, Premier League centre backs, yeah. and I've broken them down into five categories. Any of them I've got completely wrong, wrong would you say? I mean, look, um, Gabriel version two and Ben White in category two, they could go anywhere. It's only been mm. a season, but. Yeah, put your uh, put your uh, in in the second I, group. I was going to say, I would I would almost argue that you that I would say. Uh, I know this is going to be sacrilege to some people, but I would argue that Toro and Bold could easily be Matsaka and Kashani. You you could have those two either way around. I know Steve Bold's a legend and all that, but and, and I know Colo Toro was brilliant. Maybe even Kia and you could possibly Adams and O'Leary are clear. Campbell is clear based on you know leaving spurs and what you won with us um but i would say kia and Turo and bold you could easily swap mertesacker and kashoni into that list i would say i would also you've got william gallas too high um, yeah i think <laughs> even bad. chris is he can't defend william gallas no, william Gallas player, is, needs william to be gallas below is, colin pates william gallas should be below ben chorley uh or, or um, he scores some decent each group isn't in order. Any one of those individual groups can be moved around. But William Gallas, great, good goal scoring record. He only had a couple of bad times. They're just the ones everyone remembers. One where he had a poo on the pitch. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he's a very <laughs> underrated uh, player. It's... Mm. Mm. This is only in their time for us, though. I, I... Oh, we're not time for us. He was still terrible. Well, he was pretty <laughs> terrible. I, I would argue Seagan could be above Gallas in terms yeah. of, I you know, I know he was... had some dodgy times, but he also I'd... did it pretty well for us. Yeah, I'd say there was a lot of people that say we got a raw end of um, the sanchez Mikatarian deal. So that was one of the worst mm. swap deals in history. But I'd put Ashley Cole and William Gallas, you know. In fact, that... where is Ashley Cole? Oh, is this centre-backs? This yeah. is centre backs. Okay. But I yeah. would say, in terms of Ashley Cole letting him go and then going, yeah, we'll take William Gallas. I mean, that was the first time we dipped into Chelsea's bins, wasn't it? Post to Bramble. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> yeah, I, yeah, and and Scott Marshall in the bottom end. That's sacrilege, Scott. Scotland legend Scott Marshall. Uh, that's that's <laughs> outrageous. Um, but the reason yeah. we transition into that, yeah, just just okay. Yeah, I'm a bit biased because French and yeah whatever but i for me and i know he got some stick and i know he had some some games where he was poor and i know there's this you know this whole oh he put a shirt on when he left arsenal how dare he um guys it's a career all right it's called social media i highly doubt when he put that bordeaux shirt on took the arsenal shirt off that he even realized what you know our fan base god love arsenal fans but we are a sensitive bunch at times we do like a bit of drama um he, he for me, uh, Lauren Kashani, we speak of, of course. He, he, for me, he is one of the best central defenders that I've seen in the flesh. Um, people forget, I think they need to remember this. He missed out on a world cup, lifting a world cup for his nation because he put his body on the line for Arsenal that season. He, he got himself out there and it cost him that world cup because of the levels of commitment he gave to Arsenal. Yes, he left under a cloud. Um, 
you can believe what you want to believe. I choose to believe from the sources I heard that essentially Arsenal went back on a deal that they gave him. And that's the reason he got so upset. They promised him essentially that deal and, and, and they went back on it. Um, and this is a guy, like I say, who literally gave his body. He, if you listen to the Arsenal physios um, at the time, and I think Mike had Gary Lewin on, didn't they? Once upon a time recently. Um, you talked to Gary Lewin or Colin Lewin. Lauren Koscielny was an absolute, like, steadfast professional. Uh, he did everything for Arsenal. He was a captain. He brought three younger players. Him and Mertesacker, that was such a good partnership. People forget how good that was. Even him and from Ireland for, for a period um he was a really solid dependable likable bloke um who, who bled arsenal in, until the end and obviously things didn't go it, it could have been how, handled better um and if he was offered a contract and arsenal took that off the table i don't fucking blame him for saying do you know what fuck you i'm not you know i'm done i'm out i don't blame him at all it's a short career he put his body on the line and and he captained the club and i just don't think some of the some of the disrespect at the time just because he signed for a team and put a shirt on was just so silly. Um, so I I would just like to tip my hat to him. He's also a Lorient legend, of course, um, and and he was a really really good centre back. So I just wish him every success in his next career path. And uh, and I'm sorry to see him retire because it didn't really end very well at the end of Bordeaux either. So good luck, Lolo. Did you cover, because uh, my phone rang, did you cover the bit where we, we all assume he was sold a lie and then did yeah. his part yeah. of it and then they shit yeah. on him for the rest? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he was, as I say, from what I can, from the people that I believe and the people I trust, he was he was told that he would be offered a contract for the next season, that he would be a starting player. Um, and the club basically pulled that contract away from him. They tried to cut, up, they tried to cut his wages. They offered him a two-year deal. They went back on that and then offered him a one-year deal. And then they offered him... It was something along the lines of a pay-as-you-play deal. And he he took that as an insult. Um, and then there was that whole, he wouldn't travel, wasn't it? He was like, he was refusing mm -hmm. to go on the pre-season tour. And I don't blame him. I don't. I, I, and we didn't manage that situation well. Uh, and there's... there's Loyalty is an old thing in football. You don't get it very often now. Um, but when a player, you know, literally puts his body out there for a club, you've mm -hmm. got to give him a bit of loyalty back. A bit of respect, you know. Mm. So um, yeah, and it's I funny. The two people that offered him those that deal, or three people, aren't at the club anymore. <laughs> exactly. So make of that what you will. Mm. Uh, and I, it'd be very interesting what Arsene Wenger had to say about that off the record, because I don't think a man of Arsene's integrity wouldn't have treated Koscielny like that. Um, he went to war for him. So yeah, a lot went on there, and I will choose to believe what I've just said and the people I speak to. Uh, one of which being a, a very highly paid journalist, not Simon. Um, I don't think would make the stuff up. So there you go. That's all cool. I have to say on the matter. I think we're well, all done now, aren't we? I we're think we're that. all done. At the end of the show, Josh, can, have a, can put a picture up of Roe Castle and we'll end we you, do, you do your closing bit and I'll have a picture of him up for the end. Well, um, I would say thank you to the two people that have joined today. Uh, Chris? It's been an absolute pleasure with you back on the podcast and we didn't even call you short or a pirate or anything rude I'm for sure the most of the show. I mean, it, it's good to be back, mate. And, and despite what Danny tried to peddle in, in the media, I haven't retired. Uh, I have been offered a new contract, but I am negotiating with Koscielny and Raul Sanyehi over that. So uh, we'll see how it goes. I asked him if he'd given up podcasting with us. <laughs> no, I'm very much still here. Um, I've just been very busy grinding at, at life in the background, but I'm still here and I will promise to come on at some point uh, after Arsenal have won a game uh, and, and give Arteta the praise he rightly deserves. So, Well, we have Palace next, so hopefully it's after that and not when we play someone horrible. Uh, yeah. Danny, you've got to be here. and unless Thank you for you hosting, can't make John. it. Thank you. I mean, it wasn't that difficult. I just say hello and then go goodbye, everybody. And of course, thank you to the chat box as well who have joined us live. If you are listening live, please drop a like. Um, I assume you subscribe already if you've watched us live. If you found us for the first time, drop a little comment in the box and say something aggressive at us or <laughs> something nice and pleasant. I don't mind. Um, one way or another, we give as good as we get. Um, and I think, Danny, on that note, you wanted to do a little tribute to 
David Rocastle, um, and I will let. Well, I think you've done all of your um, kind of bits of remembrance on him. He's a player I don't remember. Um, I think I'd have been too young to see him play, certainly for Arsenal. Um, and yeah, uh, I think it's it's a sad day for Arsenal generally. But yeah, twenty one years since uh, his passing. And on that note, Danny, I'm going to let you hit the button as we just play out on this image of, um, yeah, the memory of uh, whatever, the David Rokas thing at Spurs. No, it's at Highbury with Spurs players there and Gunnosaurus looking very solemn. 